Okay, let's see. Is the stream on? Is it live? It seems to be working. How about the audio? Oh wow, the the uh, startup screen changed. Startup screen? What the hell am I saying? Home screen? I don't fucking know. Whatever. It all changed <laughs> to reflect what uh what case we're on. Anyways. What time is it? <laughs> 10 minutes late to my own stream. That's great. That's wonderful. That's how we do it in my in my house. <laughs> Can you tell that I just woke up? All right. So, I was about to say Phoenix Wright, the Great Ace Attorney. It's not Phoenix Wright, Jesus fuck. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We are back. Hi, hello, welcome one, welcome all. We are back with more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, where we last left off. Uh, we did the first case involving the death of a Mr. Wilson, right? He was a... He was a English professor. A science professor? Whatever, he was from England, he died, right? Some political confrontation going on there. And our main suspect was a uh, English woman by the name of uh, shit. <laughs> Don't remember. It's been a week. By the name of uh, what the fuck was her name? Giselle Brett, I think. Right, something like that. But whatever. Uh, so we did that case, solved the mystery, of course, and then figured out, figured out whatever found out that uh due to some political ties or wherever the fuck that her crime of murder was going to be uh changed a little bit to a misdemeanor which is very shocking and of course she gave us the little side eye and she's like ha, 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 ha. i have now escaped with my very wicked and evil plans you will not see the last of me Excuse me, motherfucker. What? <laughs> hey, what are you doing over there? I look at the corner of my eye, and as I'm doing the recap, my dog, like, slowly gets up, gives me the shifty eye, just walks over to his bowl and start crunching as loud as he can. What an asshole. You could have done this, you could have done this, like, a couple of minutes ago if you wanted to eat something. The food was right there, it didn't go anywhere. You know? Can't believe it. Can't believe it. This guy. That fucking guy over there. Anyways. <laughs> for those of you who want to know what dog I'm talking about, he's part of the emotes. Um. So yeah, we're back with more Great Ace Attorney. Uh... After the whole trial thing, we snuck onto a boat, a yellow submarine, and then uh, our best friend Cosma died, and we're being, uh, we're the number one suspect. Again, you know, no one ever believes us, despite the fact that uh, we just, we just went through a trial proving our innocence on this exact matter. But no one believes us. So... We have kindly been given the, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The permission to investigate the area, right? While, uh, What's-Her-Face watches us. What, what's your goddamn name? Sasato Mikoroba. There we go. I'm gonna have to get used to her. <laughs> I hope I don't fuck up her name as much as I fucked up Maya and Mia. Jesus, why they gotta have such the same name? Maya, Mia, Morgan, LaFay. All right. Uh, we talked talked about everything we could with her, so let's just examine. Let's see. This is where Dear Cosmo Son would have sat whenever he was writing. What do you want from me? What do you actually want from me? Why are you here? My dog has now walked up to me slowly, and he's just looking up at me like, Hey man, what you doing? You trying to do something? You trying to play some video games? Can I play some video games with you? 
You want to come up here? Are you going to be quiet if I if I put you on my lap? Come up here. Come over here. Come on. Don't you don't you do that. You're being, a, you're being a real pain in my ass right now. You know that? You know that? He's doing the thing where like he claws on the side of the chair and he's like, let me up. And then when I go to reach down to pick him up, he's like backing away from me. What an asshole. But now he's sitting next to me. You're going to sit there. Hi there. You're going to sit there and you're going to be quiet. That's what you're going to do. Okay. All right. We're going to play some... Phoenix Wright, this is a bad idea, by the way. This room gets super hot. I shouldn't have this fucking dog sitting right next to me. But anyways, London Diary. Poor Cosma. He'd even make it to his destination. It looks as though the last entry is incomplete. Which means he was fucking attacked in the middle of writing. Let's see what it says. It could be very valuable. What? That's out of question. Why, why'd you flip me over? What did I do? I didn't do anything. Cosmo's son may have departed this words. Wait, what? Have I, wait, what? May have departed this... Oh, this world. This words. May have departed this world, but you must not read his private thoughts. But what if it's something important? Something re relevant to the case? Something that's like, Yo, hey guys, if I die, Ryanosuke's not the one who did it. Come on, Mikotaba. All right, all right, I won't read it. Damn it. Damn, girl, you strong. Poor kazuma son. I don't like prying into people's personal matters either. But in this case, isn't the need for clues more important? Mikotaba, is there a reason you don't want me to check the diary? Oh dear, that won't do. What's the matter, suzato san Whenever I'm examining things, I always find myself so focused, I forget to look around properly. Ah, yes. That's not good. I don't suppose you're as foolish as me in that regard, are you, Naruhodo-san? Naruhodo. It's a fun name to say. I'm sure you carefully look around using those buttons, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing it. Jesus. Now let's all investigate... Let's investigate... Let's investigate all the corners of the cabin. Yep, yeah, let's do that. I suppose my field of vision has been rather small until now. That's funny. I need to know what the hell this is. Is that food? That's my dinner from last night, a roast chicken. It was really tasty. Yes, it was very delicious, wasn't it? But did you eat it on the floor here? Like a fucking animal? I'm not a dog, susato san I ate at the table, of course. Which begs the question of when and how the plate ended up on the floor. It's probably what knocked him out, right? They grabbed the plate and they said, Rachel! And smacked him across the face. But Cosmo-san didn't like chicken at all, did he? Well, I'm glad that motherfucker's dead then. Jesus. <laughs> he didn't like chicken. Cosmo, come on. That's one of the main three meats. It's chicken, turkey and pork. Not pork, my bad. I'm sorry. Chicken, turkey, and, and beef. <laughs> the reason I'm not putting pork there because I know there's people who don't eat pork. I eat pork. Though. I'll fuck it up. I made some pork chops the other day. You can see a picture of it on, on my Twitter. It was very good. I cooked it low and slow. <laughs> it was great. Because my son didn't like to eat chicken. No, that's right. That's right. He didn't touch it. Which means all the more for me. Oh no. Does that mean poor Cosmo spent his last night on Earth with an empty stomach? It's just too horrible. Hey, at least he didn't, I guess. Hey, at least he didn't shit himself when he died. Now I suddenly have guilty conscience and an aching stomach. Especially when she keeps flipping me upside down. Oh, it gives me a little fucking check mark. Hell yeah. That's awesome. It's like, hey man, you checked this shit out already. You're done. There's a knife next to it. We're not going to look at that. Okay, what about his sword? Huh. 
His sword is unsheathed. That's Cosmo's son's precious sword. He never went anywhere without it. Yes, he was always saying that a Japanese man's katana is his soul. I believe he had to work very hard to convince the government to allow him to bring it onto the ship. I suppose that just shows how important it was to him. And now he's gone. But I'm not ready to let his spirit go just yet. So we're gonna keep his soul as a trophy. <laughs> Aww. What the hell is that? Is that a candlestick? I investigated thoroughly, but I can't find anything out of place. Really? Not the not the chair or anything that's right there? Okay, alright, cool. I mean, that's not your- what is that, a sword stand? Stand for the sword? I don't know. What's this shit, though? What do you think this is? It looks like a broken piece of glassware. Whatever the thing was, it appears to have been cl uh, broken clean in two. The glass is such a beautiful color. It looks like a cute little Natsuki f what? Natsuki fastener from a Komodo outfit. Like yours? Are you the killer, Mikotoba? Did you do it? I'm not sure that sounds like Hanzma. He wouldn't have secretly carried a cute little trinket like this around with him, would he? When we didn't look. <laughs> when we turn our backs, Cosmo's just like, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. <laughs> and the marks beside it. What could it be, I wonder? It has sort of brick-like hue. Yeah, you're right. It's the color of a brick, isn't it? Well, if it's the color of a brick, then it's dried blood. I would assume. Even though I don't see anything of the same color anywhere else in this cabin. Yeah, there's a lack of blood going on here. Isn't it a thing? Listen, I'm not a, I'm not a criminal investigation, you know, criminal science investigation guy, right? I'm not CI, uh, CSI. But isn't it a thing where if someone gets hit on the head, the first one's free, right? And then it's the second wound that produces blood? Something like that. Or unless the object was just so fucking heavy that it just splattered blood everywhere. That's a very large traveling case, isn't it? Yes, it carries a lot of memories for me. Memories? What do you mean? Well, that's actually how I stowed away onto this vessel. I was brought aboard inside that case. Ah, yes. I see it says, this way up in Japanese. Which in hindsight, I should have realized the foreign crewmen wouldn't be able to read it. I was turned over and over and over, and then I was tossed on the floor in here. And then you flipped me over two more times. Oh dear, being a stowaway isn't as romantic as it sounds. Well, it was less painful than a Sasato takedown. He's like, at least I didn't get my ass beat. Can I? Oh, God. There we go. Best get it thoroughly. Okay, well, I guess that might be part of this. Did Cosmo write that before he died? Whatever the hell that is in Russian. Looks like it's written in ink. Must have knocked the ink. Oh, shit. <coughs> I'm getting a little bit of a hiccup. He must have knocked the ink pot from the desk when he collapsed on the floor. Then I suppose he wrote the message by dipping his finger in the spillage. Poor Cosmos-san. No doubt he was in terrible pain. It's almost unbearable to imagine it. I suppose he was trying to leave some kind of clue in, f in his final moments, was he? I'm sorry, partner. But I can't read your writing. I think that's forged. I don't think... Listen, I find it weird that there's... That if he... I'm assuming he was knocked on the back of the head. Right? Assuming uh, the way the body's posed up. Face laying down on the ground. Must have been hit from behind. Hit on the head. Maybe death wasn't instantaneous, but I feel like death happened before the killer left the room. So, 
it would make sense for the killer to dip his finger in ink and write it, write the message. Also, uh, what's his name? Herlock Shlomes? He said it was written in, in, he said that's written in Russian, right? Cosmo barely knew English. <laughs> barely knew English. So how would he know Russian? I don't think that's Japanese, Naruhoro-san. What? Then what language is it? Also, it's very, it's very suspect. Very sus, as the kids say nowadays. To, uh... If you're writing a dying note, your first choice is to put it in a language that... That's not native to you. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not a foreign script. I'm... F f it's in the... I can't read. <laughs> it's not a foreign script I'm familiar with. What does it mean, I wonder? It's fake. That's what it means. Now this is knocked over. The books have fallen over on the shelf. It looks like they all top it the same way. And what's this? A statue of some god of the sea? Although, he's fallen over as well. Yes, it's almost as if the whole shelf had been ransacked and everything mowed down at once. I wonder if... Hmm. Perhaps it was Cosmo doing his morning sword training, do you think? I'm trying to think. It, I don't think that's the case. But I do believe his sword somehow hit the shelf. It would make sense. Maybe... Hmm. If Cosmo was to turn around during the scuffle and he had his sword on him and it wasn't and it was still in its sheath, maybe it knocked stuff down. Mm, but that's three different shells. So it makes no sense. I don't know. But I do think it was his sword that knocked it over. I seriously doubt it. Then perhaps it was you, Naruhoro san, in a fit of rage. I wouldn't even bother leaving the wardrobe just to mess up a few books and a statue. Could the way the could the way these things have been thrown about have anything to do with the case? I wonder. Well, I'll just set everything straight again. I don't like to see a met don't fuck with the goddamn crime scene, you idiot! There is stuff missing, though. I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be full. Because we are on a, you know, on a ship. And we're only going to be here for like a couple of, for what? For what, what they say, 50 days? Did they say 50 days that they were going to be on this fucking ship? Hmm. Is it possible that one of the books on the table belongs there? Like these? Huh. I can't check the ink. Well, I'll check my little hidey hole. <laughs> it's some two weeks since we set from Japan, set sail from Japan. Have you really been living in this wardrobe the entire time, Naruhoro-san? I think living isn't quite the right description. Oh, no? I suppose not. Although, it must have been rather exciting, making this voyage in your own secret hideout. The trouble was, I never knew when a member of the crew might be coming. So yes, I did basically have to live in the wardrobe. And last night was no exception. But because of that, you have no idea what was happening out here in the cabin. No, sadly not. Ah, do you still suspect me? Hopefully you don't. <laughs> now, let's look at the way of escape, because this is apparently a locked room mystery with one, well, technically two entry points. I think there's some kind of op opening for a ventilator. A hole through which fresh air can circulate into the cabin. Isn't that a little odd? What do you mean? Well, this ventilator... If that's what it is. 
Looks like it must, it must, uh, God damn it! looks like it must connect to the next door cabin. Yes, it would appear to, you're right. But if it's supposed to allow fresh air into the room, surely it should be connected to the outside. Hmm, that's true. Perhaps it's so that rain and rain and spray don't find their way in when the seas are rough, or something like that. I suppose, maybe that's it. What the fuck? Who's that? He wasn't there a minute ago. It's almost as if he just appeared from thin air. As far as I can tell, it looks like he might be European. Oh, how did he... You've noticed the man too, haven't you? I have no idea who he is or how he got in here, but he looks suspicious and tall. Suspiciously tall. <laughs> Oh, you poor Japanese foreigners and your shortness. Naruhoro-san, don't tell me. Do you really not know who that is? Uh, well, no. I don't have any foreign friends or acquaintances at all. He doesn't look like a member of the crew. There's something very unusual about him. And is he investigating Cosmo's desk, or is he just playing on it? I can't tell. Well, in that case, we simply must talk with them. Am I just imagining it, or does cesaro san look almost uncontrollably excited? By the way, I expect that you've noticed already, but just in case, if you press A on people when they're in crosshairs, you can converse with them. Alright then, I'll get to that suspiciously tall gentleman in my sight and see what he has to say for himself. Oh, please do. Oh, please do. Yeah, please do. I don't know why I'm mocking her. Um, excuse me. Oh, here we go with this shit. Excuse me? Do you have a moment? Shh. This is a critical point in my investigation. I just got shushed. Mikoto, but do something. Maybe I should leave him alone. He seems a little unfriendly. Yes, perhaps. That would be for the best. Hmm, perhaps. Ah, fuck. Greetings! I, I didn't even get to read it. I didn't even get to read it. <laughs> I didn't even press the button. It just moved on by itself. Uh, what exactly are you doing on Cosmo's desk just now? Are you scanning me? You're scanning me, aren't you? You're scanning me. He has his Batman detective mode on right now. I see. Fascinating. Uh, sorry? What do you see? It's like he's looking right through me. Stop looking at my penis. Stop it. Oh yes, everything is clear now. The train of reasoning has run its course, and my deductions have crystallized. You have been in Afghanistan, I perceive. Just recently returned, if I'm not mistaken. Is he about to, is he about, is he literally about to give me the spiel of, of when Holmes met Dr. Watson, right? <laughs> Where he's like, you just came from Afghanistan. Yes, military man. <laughs> Sorry? What? And now, whilst venturing towards foreign claims, claims, climbs, claims, mm, climbs, climbs, that's the word, you find yourself in the most troubling predicament. Oh, well, that's true at least. But, but how? How the deduce... Wait, what? How the how the dudes did did I know that? Perhaps it was really a it was really a most elementary deduction, hardly worth explaining. Have you perhaps managed to deduce anything else? But of course, a great many things. There's no mystery, my dear madam. For example, you have fled your native land of Russia, 
being as you are a merciless revolutionary. Huh? You leave 16 victims of assassination in your wake and now travel to England to blow up the Crystal Tower. And when the <laughs> and the beribboned occupant of this very cabin discovered your identity, you ended his life too. Yes, I believe that summarizes the facts beautifully. No need to hide the truth now. Nothing deceives these eyes. Amy Kodaba, this is the guy you, uh, you believe in? Uh, just to be clear, you are talking about me, are you? Certainly I am. Do you see uh, another in this cabin who fits the bill? A Russian assassin with 16 victims to his name? I don't even see one person who fits the bill. Cesaro, please. So it's true. It was you who did this to Cosmo. You... Mm. It's hard to stay mad at you. What? And... And you're planning a revolution, too. It's shameful behavior in Arahodo san Absolutely wicked. Wickedly fucking sick. No, listen. There's no way I... God damn it. Now explain yourself. Tell me everything. This is ridiculous. How could you do it? For Pete's sake, open your eyes. I'm not Russian. <laughs> I'm not a Russian revolutionary, obviously. Oh, forgive me. And as for you, what kind of deduction was that? You were just saying the first thing that came in your head. But was I not right? No, you weren't. Whilst venturing towards foreign claims, and claims, climbs, shit. <laughs> Foreign climbs, you do find yourself in the most troubling predicament, do you not? Well, yeah, but that's because of you. Ha, huh, there you have it, you see? What do you make of that? I make its basic assumption, you idiot. Well, to be honest, this ship is en route to England, and I'm in handcuffs at the scene of a murder. So, I'm not really sure you could call it deduction. More like plain observation. Indeed. An observation, my dear boy, is the basis of all deduction. My methods is founded upon the observation of trifles. You see, I announce my findings with the, with the brassy certitude. And more often than not, I'm right. Well, guess what? You're wrong. Uh-huh. I don't think you introduced yourself. Ah, uh, my apologies. How remiss of me. I am none other than the greatest detective, that's a lie, the greatest detective of the century, known to men and women the world over. The intim- the what? Imitable? That's that word? Intimidable? I don't know. Inimitable. Inimitable? Listen, I'm not a linguist, okay? I'm Herlock Schloes. So, it's really you, the actual Herlock Schloes. The very same. The Inimitable, actually, Herlock Schloes. Do you know this man, Cesaro san? The most famous detective in the world, Narahoro san. Of course I do. There's nobody who hasn't heard of him. Besides me, the guy who just asked you who the fuck this guy is. What planet have I been living on then? You must ask him what he has deduced. <laughs> he will have worked out the entire case already, I'm sure. Really? Why do I feel uneasy about this? Alright. So, great detective. So, you're a great detective, are you? Sorry, what's your name again? 
Indeed, I am none other than the one and only Herlock Schlums. Oh, I see. You're German. Herlock, was it? No, no. I have no her. I mean, I have hair. Please, call me Schlums. You can read all about my exploits in this exciting London publication. Oh, yes. Rat- what? Rants? Rat- Rats? I don't fucking know. Rats magazine, full of wonderful short stories and interesting articles from Great Britain. I never miss an issue. I have it- I have it sent from England, especially. Ah, uh, yes, here it is. The Adventures of Herlock Schlums. So, you're the protagonist in a series of short stories, then. So you're a quack. Indeed I am. And you read so many of your own stories, you started to think you really are a detective. Make no mistake, I'm not the poor, deluded fellow you take me for. You're inferior. Wait, what? <laughs> inferior. <laughs> Fuck. Your inference. An inference? Fuck. Damn it. It's backwards. I can't read. I'm sorry. Backward. My trusty biographer records my greatest detective achievements and chronicles them in this magazine. You have a biographer, do you? Doesn't everyone? Mine goes by the name of Dr. Wilson, presently keep keeping shop in London. Isn't he dead? So... Here's the thing. I felt it the moment. <laughs> I felt it a little bit the moment we got into the first case. Because it was like, it was like, here's Dr. Wilson. Right? And I'm like, where's the pun here? And then Herlock Shlom shows up and I'm like, I'm like, did we kill Watson? Is that, is that what happened? Is Watson dead? Dr. Wilson. I must say, thanks to the publication, I've been fantastically busy of late. Why, this very moment, I'm returning from Asia, having solved the, the mystery of a cursed royal crown. Really? I can't work out whether I should take this man seriously or not. Deduction, you see, is to me a science, logical reasoning in its purest form. A science? Really? God. The astute observer notices even the most su subtle of reactions in his suspect. A fruitive, fru fruitive, furtive, fur what? A furtive glance, a twitch of a muscle, a slight inclination of the posture, fingernails, arm sleeves, furrows in the skin. All these things are data. Right. And the trained logician makes deductions from this data in a blink of an eye. The ultimate conclusion is, without fail, the truth. As I demonstrated only a few short moments ago. How can you look at me in the eye and claim that? So you see, I have a turn I have a turn both for observation and for deduction and fame. That is what makes me the only, the one and only, her, no, her Lark Schlones. Okay. So, uh, what about Cosmo? Have you managed to deduce anything about this particular case yet? Have I managed to deduce anything, my dear fellow? Who do you suppose discovered the culprit in his, in his most cunning hiding place? That's right. It was none other than the great detective before you now, Mr. Herlock Schlums. Ah, I see. In other words... I'm in these now because of him. When I became anxious about Cosmos on this morning, I summoned all the crew members to force the cabin door open. And I concealed myself amongst their numbers, gaining entry to the scene of the crime. Yes. Luckily for everyone, the great detective, Herlock Schlums, was on board. And the handcuffs seemed to be an exact, an excellent fit, Mr. Narohoro. Ah. 
The very moment I laid eyes on the scene, two facts were immediately apparent to me. Oh really? Two facts, you say? I like how it folded into a new option, that was pretty cool. Two facts. Two fact authentication? <laughs> Mr. Sloams, tell us please. What two facts were apparent to you when you came into this cabin this morning? Ah, uh, yes, but first, let's be precise. The two facts in question were immediately apparent to me. Yes, yes, I understand. But what are they? Allow me to elucidate. Elucidate? El elucidate. 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 Fuck! <laughs> elucidate. That's the word. The two facts that I deduced from this from a mere momentary glance at the scene of the crime were as follows. Number one, the cabin was locked from within, rendering escape of the culprit out of the question, except for the other from, except for the, you know, vent that leads to the next cabin. Number two, the victim was Russian and killed following... What? <laughs> victim was Russian and killed following a dispute with an acquaintance. Well, both of those are highly wrong, Mr. Shlomes. Hold on, Mr. Shlomes. What made you think the victim was Russian? Observe the dying message left by the victim on the floor. Yeah, I can't read that. This is the Russian word for wardrobe. Oh, what a pain in the ass! You serious? Ah, so whoever did it fucking knew I was in there. You fucking asshole. Do you really think Cosmo Sama would have left the dying message in Russian? In their final moments, many find their native tongue filling their heads for this young man, Russian. I fucking called it. In your final moments, instantly, native tongue, write it, write the thing you know most familiar to you. Cosmo was Russian? Was he? Initially, <laughs> initially, I considered guard rope, maybe the name of the killer, a certain Robert Guard, perhaps. But in the entrance of thoroughness, I decided it would be wrong not to look inside the wardrobe, there at least, where you found Mr. Narahodo sleeping soundly. Quite so, I found you. The renowned Russian revolutionary killer. Why is it that I'm Russian too? I observed that you were wearing the same attire as the victim. In other words, you were acquainted. And if my memory serves, that outfit is a traditional dress of a Russian of the Russian people. <laughs> All right, come on, come on, Cesado. Snap out of it. The moment he said that, you should come on. Our school uniforms are the tradi- Oh my god, I fucking hate you. <laughs> Our school uniforms are the traditional dress of the Russian people? I had no idea. And I had no idea a detective could get something so wrong. I took a photograph of the victim and the message that I might analyze it for possible hidden details. This... This was taken immediately after the young man was discovered, before the body was removed. Yes, Cosma had already been taken away when I woke up. This is the first time I'm actually seeing him like this. Damn, Cosma. Are you alright, Mr. Narahodo? Of course I'm not alright, that's my guy! Oh, yeah, thank you. Photograph of the crime scene has been entered into the courtroom. It's court record, my bad courtroom. Can I actually... I'm sorry. I like to be thorough myself. At least as thorough as I can be. Hmm. Got any nose hairs in there? <laughs> huh. Someone got two little lines on his nose, though. Hmm. Nothing that really stands out to me at the moment. 
Yeah, nothing. Besides that he's just laying on his stomach, so I would assume that he was hit from behind. That they hit it from the back! <laughs> Can I ask you something, Mr. Sloans? What, pray? <clears throat> you mentioned Russian before as well, didn't you? You know, when you said I was a fearsome revolutionary fleeing from Russia and all that... Ah, uh, yes. It's a train of reasoning that led me to the truth. Would you mind explaining that train of reasoning to me? You know? I don't speak Russian. I don't know what that word is. I'm not even going to attempt it. Certainly, if it interests you. How many times I'm not Russian and I don't speak Russian? Alright. Um, can we talk about your deduction before? The thing you concluded about me, I mean? Ah, the now famously accurate troubled predicament you find yourself in. Actually, it was the other details that I was more hoping to discuss. You know, the merciless Russian revolutionary and assassin of 16 part. Ah, yes. The more soded details. It was a fairly commonplace deduction. Here, here we have this morning's paper. The main headline reads... Revolutionary Val... Bor oh god, I, I'm... Damn it. <laughs> Valen... Velen... Velen? Velen. Velen Borshevik? Fuck. Velen Borshevik. Flees Russia via Shanghai. Via Shanghai? We didn't stop in Shanghai, did we? I'm not- I'm not crazy. Shanghai is China, is China, right? This very- uh, this vessel made a port call that Shanghai yesterday, and last night the young Russian was murdered. Am I crazy? Shanghai is- Shanghai's China. Right? Let me look that up real quick. I actually need to know this. Where is Shanghai? Shanghai is China. Okay, great. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Fucking, uh, yeah, so Shanghai is China. And we're from Japan, so we stopped at China? Wait, we stopped at China? Does that mean we also... Did this ship also deliver... Deliver. <laughs> deliver. Did this ship also carry Giselle? Because her... Her, um... Her trial was gonna take place in Shanghai. Hmm. And last night, the young Russian was murdered. Since when was Cosma a Russian? It sounds like Mr. Shalom's has concluded he was Russian because of what Cosma saw wrote on the floor. It was a simple act of reasoning to realize that the culprit of this crime was the same merciless revolutionary. One who... One who would kill the very man who helped him to escape after his true identity was discovered. Hey, Holmes. Uh, my bad, Schlomes. There's a picture of the guy on the paper. I don't look like that guy. <laughs> yes, you. Valen Broskovic. No. How could it be me? I don't look anything like this man. Just look at his face. Well... You are a fearsome revolutionary, after all. Therefore, you have no doubt learned to revolutionize your parents as well. You're a fucking moron. <laughs> Please. And I might add, your name does not appear on the ship's passenger list. Need I say more? Well, that's because I'm a stowaway. What about the other details? The 16 victims of assassination and blowing up the Crystal Tower? God, Crystal Tower sounds like some super Final Fantasy type shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I mean, in Final Fantasy XIV, there is a Crystal Tower. Ah, uh, yes. The journalist clearly interviewed the man and printed all those particular... Wait, what? Printed all those peculiarities, something like that, in the article. That's not even the word, but I'm going with it. The deeds of the man has has perpetrated thus far, and those he is plotting. 
Yes, everything about his revolutionary, about this revolutionary Bolshevik, I hope I'm saying that name right, Bolshevik was included. There can be no mistake. Do, do revolutionaries usually agree to interviews with newspaper reporters? I wonder. And what about the part where you said I was just returning from Afghanistan? Also quite clearly stated here in the article. Borchevik has recently returned after a period of super supervised activities in a war-torn region of Afghanistan. Where even is it anyways? This Afghanistan place. Here, take the paper for yourself as a little memento of this great deduction. Oh, yeah, thank you. I've absorbed all that there is of interest to me within these pages, but I see no rubbish bin nearby. Okay. Is there anything else I can read in that? And you may find the article on the back page on the back page of, of it interesting as well. On the back. Cast your eyes over it sometimes if it interests you. Though you may not need someone oh, though you may need someone to interpret. It's all written in Russian. I couldn't hope to read it. But I suppose it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt just to glance the article. Maybe there's a picture or two. Yeah, I actually do want to see it on the back. Oh, hello. Hmm. Okay, she seems to be a ballerina. <laughs> that is one beautiful lady. Hmm, this is interesting. Have you found something relevant, Naruhara-san? Well, no. I... I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I can read... I can't read a single, a single word, I'm afraid. I'm trying to see what that... What does that say, 20 years? 20 years of, of ballet? <laughs> Nor can I. But look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? She's very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I love how she shaked a little, like she was kind of mad at me. I... I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. Ah, I'm glad you noticed this article. Yeah. Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. It pops up whenever... He pops up everywhere, this Mr. Shlomes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Oh, shit. Are you sure about that, Shlomes? Should I be taking any advice from you? <laughs> Renowned prima ballerina. Prima? Prima ballerina. Sounds like something that, like, Disney Junior would be playing. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavich Ballet. Ballet? The oh, god. Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pav... Pav... God... Pavlova? <laughs> Why are Russian names so hard to remember? Listen, every name's hard to remember for me. <laughs> it would appear that the woman was in costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Wearing the diamond tiara you see pictured. Which is worth some 20,000 rubles. Oh, so that's what it says down there in the... In the uh, right-hand corner. Right-hand bottom corner. Oh. How much is 20,000 rubles? I have no idea. But I'm quite sure... It must be an unbelievable sum of money. Sasato-san's eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. The tiara is the property of the... Of the Novavich Ballet. It would seem that the director is beside herself with worry. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most ancient to recover both Ms. Pavola and the, and the valuable tiara. They've requested international assistance at all ports with, selling to great, uh, with sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of the Russian fleeing his or her country? It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response, Mr. Narahoto. She's like, hey, that's racist. <laughs> Just straight up. 
Who would dare harm such a beautiful lady? Hmm. Interesting. Before we started talking, you were examining Cosmo's desk, weren't you? Cosmo? Ah, uh, yes, the victim. Yeah, the Russian man with the Japanese name. Did you notice anything useful? Anything at all? Observe for a moment the desktop of the victim. Yes, I shall observe. We see the victim was engaged in pinning some text. London Diary. Cosmo was keeping notes of the trip. Ah, but it's written in Japanese, asshole. I don't think you should read his private writings. It, it could upset some people. Looks at fucking Makotaba. I keep calling her Mikotaba. I think her name is Makotaba, right? Like there's no I in it. Oh no, it is Mikotaba. Okay, my bad. Mikotaba. I like saying Mikotaba. I'm keep. I'm not gonna call her Suzato. It's Mikotaba. It's fun to say. <laughs> Oops. Tragic. It's something you ought to perhaps. God, here's this fucking word again. Elocate. Elocate. No. Alluded it. Elucidate? Fuck. Elucidate before the acting before the act of reading. You you mean you read it already? It's my business to know what other people do not. Yes, believe it or not, I know a, sm a smattering of Japanese. Oh, I see. Well, you're about to know what what a Suzato takedown is. Come on, Mikoto, but do something. Suzato san? Aren't you gonna throw the detective with one of your trademark takedowns? I'm sorry, Nadahoda san. What on earth do you mean? Life is so unfair. Anyways, to return to the matter at hand, namely this diary belonging to the victim. It would appear the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tell me, what is the nature of the writing? Pray. Pray be precise as the detail. Wow. Pray be precise as the detail. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, but I thought you knew Japanese. A smattering, dear boy. Only a smattering. Only a little schmeckle of honey, please. Sayonara, bonsai, mikado, nado, nado. I trust you. I trust you're suitably impressed. Ha 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 ha. But this diary is is littered with complicated looking characters of which I can read precisely none. So, what was all that showing off before then? If you could be so kind as to show me, I would be happy to read it to you, Mr. Slums. I'm much obliged, my dear madam. The final entry here is Cosmo's diary consists of two short sentences. The first reads... 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. A whistling sound? Hmm. These are very deep waters. Pray, go on. The second sentence reads... 1.35. What looks like some sort of speckled ban is dangling from the ventilator grill. Speckled ban? What on earth does that mean? I have no idea. I never heard that expression before. Hmm. The ventilator grill, you say? The man was presumably referring to... To the lattice. Lattice? Lattice? That's the word? <laughs> to the lattice there on the wall, which connects to the adjour... Uh, God. Adjoining... Adjoured. Adjoining... Adjoining cabin. Yes, the adjoining cabin. Just say it, Jason. It'll be way better. Just say it, Jason. So, I believe I've given you enough to consider for the time being, at least. Ah, do you have somewhere to go? As it happens, the victim's writing in the diary have, be have piqued my interest. The matter warrants further investigation, I believe. And if I am still too long... Wow. And if I am still too long, the seasickness takes hold. Oh, I suppose. 
you're thinking of investigating the cabin next door, which the ventilator connects to. Great detectives are a curious breed. Our minds rebel at the station as st God, at stagnation. We crave mental exil God exil exhalation. Fuck words, big. Listen, I'm not good with words, but I am good with. I am I am smarticle. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I intend to investigate. Hence, the truth will become clear soon enough. Do you think perhaps that we could go with you? Hmm, no. That would be somewhat complicated. What? But why? Pork why? <laughs> Pork why? A simple glance at your wrist should reveal the answer. Oh, fuck off, Shlones. Come on, you're super wrong about this. Oh, these. After all, you're the prime suspect in this matter. No? There's no point in trying to turn it into a question. You're the one who decided I was the culprit in the first place. Whatever do you mean? I have no recollection of naming you as the culprit at any point. Then who the fuck slapped these fucking handcuffs on me? You must be joking. You, you just said it one moment ago. Oh. Is he gonna be, is he gonna be that guy? Is he gonna be like, no, I said suspect, not culprit. Dear me, you're clearly misguided. I would have no case, I have no cause to say such thing. Well, actually, Mr. Sloans, I did hear you say that, too. You're quite sure? Well, that's very strange. I would have said, <laughs> I would have said you had the, God damn it! I would have said you had the face of a criminal, you know? Not really. So what? Were you looking at my knees before? Some great detective you are. Well, anyways, that was then and this is now. What do you mean? What I mean, sir, is this. If you're the culprit, then you must play the part more convincingly. Roll over and accept your fate. Jackass. Now he's just being plain rude. Mikotoba, please. And off he goes. Having just laughed in my face. His sense of humor is as twisted as his name. Naruhoto san, what are you just standing there for? I'm fucking handcuffed, and if I take one step out of my zone, you fucking flip me. You must go investigate the cabin next door as well. Aren't you forgetting something? What about these? There's no way I can. All right. Thanks a lot. At the Cosmo Sun spent his dying moments struggling to leave us a clue, you're willing to give up? You could have told me that without hurting me. You're just gonna roll over and accept your fate. Well, I didn't roll over, you flipped me. As if you gave me any choice in the rolling over part. I think we still have some investigation to finish off here first, don't we? Let's carry on examining, examining what we can in this cabin while we wait for our chance to slip in next door. Good idea. The situation doesn't look good for me, but there's still things I gotta do for myself. And I owe it to Cosmo to do everything I can to find a way out of this and bring the real culprit to justice. Alrighty then. Oh, I can't present things. Damn it. <laughs> I gotta show someone my badge. Do you see this badge? Badge of an honorable man. I want to read this. What is this? Is it in Russian? It's in Russian. These are rules of passage for traveling aboard the SS Bura. Bur Bura? 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 I don't know. It's, essential, it's essentially a list of requests from the captain to all passengers on board. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are strictly forbidden. Guess that makes me a pet. <laughs> the weapon part? Yeah, I know. What? Why are you staring at me? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking. You're gonna call me a pet, aren't you? <laughs> are you more a dangerous subject or a pet? Jesus, fuck. 
I'll be your pet, Mikotova. I can't decide. Well, one thing's for sure. Either way, I wasn't supposed to be here. What's this? Segi. Hmm, the Japanese word for justice. The brush strokes are straight and true, just like Cosma. Yes, his calligraphy always was a reflection of his heart. Yet you... Can you really look at those characters without feeling shame, knowing who drew them so thoughtfully? Of course I can! I mean, I'm innocent, so why shouldn't I be able to? Come on, Mikotaba. Even though you stow away on the ship. Hmm. It wasn't my idea, it was his. If you want to talk about straight and fucking true, how come he's been lying to you this whole entire time, eh? Now you're gonna bring that up, are you? I can't win. So this table's fucked up. Can I look at this, please? There's nothing on this table at all. Yeah, which is the problem. The plate in culinary... Cul cul culinary, god. Cul culinary, fuck. Cutlery, fuck. I can't say the word, my tongue won't do the thing. The plate and cutlery are all over the floor for some reason. Yes, it's strange. Last night when I went to sleep, I'm sure everything was still. No, wait a minute. What is it? That's funny. I can't seem to remember anything about what happened after dinner at all. Was I fucking drugged? So, so then perhaps... You are responsible for what happened to Cosmo-san. I'm gonna... <clears throat> Mikotoba, please. Please, Mikotoba. Alright. Hmm. There's this chair over here. Did the, uh... The book did get added in there, didn't it? Okay, so it's just that. Alright, making sure. This is... yes, it's a bell cord contraption, I think. What do you mean, contraption? I heard about it in the book. I was studying that talked about life in Great Britain. Large households... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Large households often have bell cords like this, which, can, which you can pull to ring a bell and summon a servant. Really? That sounds almost magical. Shall we give it a little try? Yes! In the interest in the entrance of cultural research, obviously. Oh, you just want to ring the bell. Go ahead, you fucking cat. That was wonderful. I suppose nobody comes for lowly Japanese people. Jesus! No, I'm sure it's just that everyone's busy, that's all, you know, with the murder. <laughs> She's like, I guess no one cares about the Japanese. Mikotoba, I care about you. I would care about you more if you if you didn't stop, f you know, if you stop flipping me every five seconds. Or maybe if you keep flicking me. Flicking? <laughs> if you keep flipping me, I'll like you even more. Who knows? It can go both ways here. Alright, so nothing to check in here. Nothing on the bed, of course. Don't think we need to check that. Hmm. Well, all that's left. Oh, the door. Didn't check the door. My bad. When I went for help, the crewman forced the door open. This bolt had been firmly closed. Hmm, it's quite a small bolt. Not particularly sturdy. It just slides across to secure the door. Mikotoba! How... How many attempts did it take for them to open this door? Because the door could have already been busted. Hmm. It's quite a small bolt and not particularly sturdy, and it just slides across to secure the door shut. But still, with the door bolted, there would have been no way to get in or out of the cabin, that's for sure. It's no wonder everyone suspects me. Just dropping by to say hi. Oh, hey, Breezy, how's it going? Hope everything's fine with you today. <laughs> I had a car accident today. It was wonderful. Head-on collision. <laughs> when she glares at me like that, I feel tense. I feel tense all 
feel tense all up and down my spine. That's because when she stares at me like that, I can't help but fucking melt into a puddle. I remember reading once in a detective novel, the culprit used a needle and thread to draw a bolt across the... What? To draw a bolt across from the outside of the room in a situation like this. Yes, that's a clever trick, isn't it? I'm an avid reader of detective stories myself. <laughs> what happened? Well, I wasn't the one driving. It was my dumbass brother who doesn't know the difference from real life and Speed Racer. So, yeah. From my, from my viewpoint, because, you know, I was on my phone, minding my own business, hoping that I wouldn't die. Because <laughs> every time I'm in the car with that guy, I think I'm going to die. Uh, fucking, from my viewpoint... Both people, totally in the wrong, right? My brother fucking swerving at a stop sign like an idiot, but also the person we crashed into, uh, or crashed into us, whatever, they were driving on the wrong side of the fucking road and turning into the stop sign. Also, there were some workers on the road too, and their cars were parked in front of the stop sign? I don't know, it's stupid. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. <laughs> I really don't. I just got out the car and I was like, what, a block or two away from my home? And I was like, yep, you deal with this. I'm just going to walk home. <laughs> I was coming home from work. I was very tired. But yeah, that was fun. It was one of those moments where like the moment I looked up and I saw it coming together, I just, I don't get scared in situations like that. I just kind of accept it, <laughs> right? So I just looked up and I went, yep, we're fucked. You know. And of course, the moment the crash happens, there goes my, my brother looking for every type of excuse he can make. Right? Like, man, these people shouldn't really be parked like this out here. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here, I'm like, you shouldn't be going fucking 50 miles an hour in a residential area, you dumbass. Swerving through stop signs. At least no one got hurt. Yeah, no one got hurt, really. Which is surprising. Because it was a head-on collision. It's not my first head-on collision. <laughs> my first head-on collision, I was the one driving, but it wasn't my fault, though. I didn't get hurt either, in that one either. Some jackass ran a fucking stop sign. Not stop sign, stop light. Anyways, back to uh, the Ace Attorney. <laughs> uh, but the door of the cabin and its frame are made of metal, and they seal together perfectly. There would be no possibility of using the small needle thread trick. Right? Small needle small needle and thread trick here, I'm afraid. When she glares at me like that, I feel pins and needles all up and down my spine. Oh, what the hell is this guy doing? The crewman. Do you mean he wasn't there before, was he? Hmm. That's what I thought. Why don't we try talking to him? Probably because I'm likely to get yelled at again, but I suppose I could try. Hello there, good sir. Is that... Is something wrong, Narahodo-san? Oh, no. It's just the crewman standing by the door. I can't help feeling like I've seen him somewhere before. Oh yes, you're right. He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. You son of a bitch! <laughs> I didn't, like, I can't see his face clearly, but the cheekbones I noticed automatically. It's the fucking detective. Not detective. Is he a detective? Whatever. Investigator? The police guy? Yes. Is he, is he gonna be this game's fucking gumshoe? There he is. That's my waiter! I recognize that face, but it can't be. Yep, it is. It is. I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosonaga. He's undercover. Find it hard that he's undercover when he's spewing, spitting blood everywhere. Like a fountain. Hello again. What are you doing here? I think this should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you, my heart stopped. I coughed out my lung. Nearly stopped, I hope. 
I received some special orders to undergo, to undergo, wow, well, to go undercover as a member of the crew and board this ship. Again? You certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. If there's anything I can do to help you, please ask. Alright, great. Get me out of these fucking cuffs because I didn't do it. I never expected to see this man on board. But perhaps his presence can help me out of these of this hopeless situation. Alright. Convert Hey, Hosonika. We're in this together, right? Ah oh, damn it. How do I present? Ugh. Inspector, can I show you this? What the Is that the f is that the Fable Imperial Yume University pin badge? Uh I'm not sure if it's really fabled exactly, but So, you're a genuine student, then. Sorry? Nothing like me. With my regular schooling, you're something much greater. Is that what you were trying to say? Uh, sorry, man, I didn't mean to bring up any fucking demons that you had, you know? Jesus, I just want to show you my cool-ass pen. It's spiky. Can I have my badge back, please? <laughs> you may not. <laughs> and he just throws it. All right, special orders. I'm hungry. <laughs> so what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? Well, he's undercover, so I don't think he can really say. I'm so sorry. Hmm? This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For what? My orders were to act as a son of God. A s God. I can't say his fucking name. What's wrong with me? Asagi. Asagi? Asagi. Asagi son's bodyguard. Well, you fucking failed at that, didn't you? He's dead now. It was Minister of Justice G Jigoku? Jigoku. Who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead? <coughs> and he entrusted me with ensuring that Asagi san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How could he. How could that even have been a possibility? We're just students, damn it. I'm not sure. But oh god, my stomach just super growled. Oh, it, it like vibrated my whole body. Jesus fuck, I'm hungry as shit. But these are complicated times. There, there are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. And this is incredible. I don't believe it. Cosmosama was assassinated? Obviously, we can't give Asogi-san the visible security, a uh, visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been aboard, from morning until night, every day. Wait, so... So you were outside the cabin when it all happened, right? If that's true, then the person did come from the vent. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin. Not here on the first class deck. This is first class? Man, it's really shitty. But it was a century ago, so, yeah. God, if this is first class, what's common? What's common class, you know? Where, <laughs> where do the commoners go on this ship? In the fucking holding cells? <laughs> uh. Would I say Hisonika's uh, yeah. Tongue twisters. Would I say Hisonika's disguise is close to 10, uh, 10 out of 10, if you don't recognize him at first? Oh, I rec- I- mm. To be fair, I did not recognize him at first until until they said, you know, he showed up and they're like, wait, does that person look familiar? And then I, I looked at him. I couldn't really see it, even though I'm wearing my glasses. But then I was like, wait, those cheekbones. I know who that is. <laughs> it's a pretty good disguise. If you don't look at, if he's just walking by and passing, I wouldn't have noticed him at all. <laughs> but, you know, the moment I turn my head, I'm like, Wait, those glasses, those cheekbones. I know who that is. <laughs> I'm a disgrace. 
all I can do is humbly apologize. But yes, 10 out of 10, definitely. So, if there's anything at all that I can do to help now, just say the word. Get me out of these cuffs. What the hell? Are you okay back there? I have one dog sitting on my lap and the other one's on my bed and she's like coughing. Are you alright? Okay, she's just looking at me. She's like, go back to playing your game. <laughs> and your stomach is growling. Very loudly. <laughs> We're doing what we can to investigate Cosmo's death ourselves. I thought you might be... You didn't do it, did you? You're not the killer. Of course I'm not the fucking killer. Of course not! We really like to investigate the cabin next door. Yes. So we need to be allowed out of this cabin. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. What? Oh, I really hope the microphone's picking that up. My, my stomach is growling like a bitch. <laughs> uh, you've been deemed to risk to risk the ship's safety. If you move to even... Wow, if you move to even touch the handle of the cabin door, I will shoot you. You will die. That stormy-looking seaman... <laughs> seaman. <laughs> stormy-looking seaman there would surely snap your neck in two. With his thighs, no less. <laughs> and Mother Russia's, we crush potatoes with thighs every day. I suppose I'm not just a stowaway now. They think I'm a murderer as well. Come on, stomach, shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ, you're killing me here. Would it be possible to give me something to work with? Do you think? I'm gonna need something persuasive. Persuasive? Just show them these nice buns of steel. They're gonna have to let me pass. What do you think? If I had a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example, I'd do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it. Really? I'd lay my life on the line if I had to. But, I don't see how. There may be a way. What? Really? Think of how you tried to persuade me of your innocence, Narahoro-san. By presenting me with the piece of evidence that you already had in your possession. Evidence? It's just the same, it's just the same as when you were in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. Simply select the present panel and choose some evidence that Inspector Honosa can use. Honosa? Did I just say that? God, these names are killing me! So evidence like evidence that would give us a valuable uh, <laughs> Evidence that would give us a valuable reason to investigate the next door cabin, is it? Alright, yes. I think I might know what we can use. Let's see if I can present the detective with the evidence he needs to persuade the captain. I don't fucking know. Let me see. Mm. Russian word for wardrobe, article, blah blah blah. Maybe the book. And maybe the book. Wait, did I not click? Oh, I didn't click. Hold up. Where's a uh, backup? Present. There we go. Maybe the book? What's that? It's Cosmo's diary. Just before he died, Kazuma-sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Dear diary, I was looking at, <laughs> I was looking at uh, Ryunosuke today, and he was very sexy. Strange, in what way? He wrote, what looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Ice, a speckled band. That's strange. Yes. We're still trying to work out what he meant by that, but what I like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're very astute, Inspector. Well, he is an expector. What do you expect? That ventilator clearly joins to the next door cabin. That's right. Can you stop kicking me in my side, damn it? <laughs> my dog is just sitting next to me, just kicking the shit out of me. That's right. So if we can investigate in there, we might be able to work out what the speckled band was. Little bastard. Alright then. I can't... 
I can't believe that this can't that was everything just got real right there for a second. <laughs> I hate it when mommy and daddy fight. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given the capitan. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. Can you stop licking my pants? What are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck? Stop it, you weirdo. I have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're willing to do that? Yes, as long as you don't leave the first class cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove these those handcuffs, though. Can't break these cuffs. And what about the captain? Captain? God. What about the captain? Are you gonna assist his- oh god, are you going against his direct orders? I'm a man of my word. And I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. After all, I failed to keep As Asagi safe, so it's the least I can do. Thank you. Let's seize the moment then, Narahoro-san. Just select move and we can go. Move. So when you, what you're saying is when I move, you move. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> uh. That's a fucking mouse trap on the floor. Phew. I'm finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be, and this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Cosmo Sama was being sent on a study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in first class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steer and steer steerage. Really. That must be awful. Look at that fucking burly ass dude. Oh, look over there. Another crewman keeping watch. And he looks enormous. Even if even if he's still sitting down. <laughs> and he's not wearing a shirt that fits him all the way. He's like, check out this midriff. Been working on these abs for fucking months. The door next to him leads to the second class accommodations. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose. Like people in handcuffs. Arahoro san? You look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I would have thought you used the ship by now. I've been stuck inside the fucking wardrobe for two weeks, lady. Well, yes, I know. But the thing is. I wasn't inside Cosmo's trunk when I first came aboard. I mean, I wasn't, my bad. I was inside Cosmo's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside the little wardrobe. Must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me the pity look. You look like a puppy. Alright, first things first. Y'all motherfuckers got rats on this ship. Look out for the Royal Rat Authority. Walking through the halls. <laughs> a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back at home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of ch a lump of chalk or something as bait. You mean cheese? Let me see. Yes, I think this is what is called cheese. It's made from milk of cat. We we don't have cheese in Japan. Guys, what the fuck have we been doing with our lives? Cheese? I wonder what that tastes like. Japan? Hold up. What? <laughs> Japan? Wait. Japan never made cheese? Ever? Not even once? Home of the Wagyu beef? You serious? No fucking way. You can't eat it, Narahoro-san. The trap will snap shut on your fingers. Really? But... I suppose you're right. I do want some cheese. <laughs> we, 
just sitting there like, I can go for some juice. I can go for some juice right now, too. I had monster in my fridge, but then it went bad, so I had to throw it out. <laughs> you aren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Cosmos leftovers. You don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Poor you. I'll find a little snack for you later. <laughs> yes, Mama Mikoda, but please take care of me. Alright, let's go in the cabin. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Cosmos son wrote that he saw a speckled band emerge. Maybe whoever's in the cabin can help us solve the particular mystery. Uh, peculiar, God. Peculiar mystery. Let's ask. Come on, man. Oh, um. I suppose you wouldn't want to challenge me in a Pokemon battle, would you? Excuse me. We, uh, we need to get inside this cabin here. Okay. I take that as a no. Mikotoba, quick, do your sexy dance. Distract him. Marin Karen, that motherfucker. <laughs> Sailor's eyes speak volumes. They clearly say, keep out. That's what I wrote on the sign we put over the wardrobe doors. Although this man's version is definitely more effective. Doesn't look like he's gonna let us pass. That's a problem. Maybe if I bait him with cheese. Huh. Can I... Can I talk to you? Um, excuse me, but... Could I ask you something? You? You little stowaway murderer? Jesus, okay, I'm sorry, fuck. That wasn't a good start, was it? Maybe you should have started the conversation. Why would you let me talk to him? Why would you let the guy in handcuffs talk to him first? Mikotoba, help me out here, please. All right, let me try instead. Yes, please, please do. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask you something of you? You? You little third class late. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Oh, cry, Mikotoba. You seem to have caught the sailor's uh, bad day, huh? I'm, I'm not sailor. My mother gave me name. I am senior crewman Biff. Sh My god, Beef Stroganoff? Really? We're doing that? Biff Stroganoff. Hell no punches with that one. <laughs> Phew. The best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. Okay, Beef Stroganoff. Um, Mr. Stroganoff. About the first class cabin area. Here we are, here in the finest part of Bu oh God, Bura? I swear, I don't know how to say that. Your stream, sh stream ship. Stream? Why am I saying stream? Steam. Steam ship for very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. That is why I'm always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway in sight. I want to pick you up and throw you into ocean, but stroke it off, not animal. Thank you. He's not an animal. Hey, at least he has some sort of manners. If I may, I was wondering. Is the cabin next to Mr. Sogi's currently occupied? Da. Hmm. Sado-san? You understand that? It sounded like, duh. I think it's probably Russian for yes. Or no. Genius. Fun. <laughs> just him looking, just him going, fucking genius. It's not permitted to visitors other cabins. Wait, what? It's not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Okay. Well, sounds like there's somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes. It's tantalus. Tan 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 tantalizing? My bad. Tantalizing. That's the word. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Asogi's? 
his name is Mr. Grimsby Roylott. He's very important Westerner gentleman. A Westerner gentleman. <laughs> Game has has my sense of humor, and I love it. I love it too. I would love it more if I had something to eat. Jesus, I didn't think I would be this hungry. Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roylott is in is enthused. What? Authentic Western gentleman. Fuck, I can't even. What? <laughs> can't read. Such a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East islands. Jesus, why is everybody beating the shit out of Japanese people out here? That was harsh. The fucking English woman called us, called us out. Fucking Russians are calling us out. The fucking Russians are calling us out. Don't you got a fucking nuclear wasteland go to or something like that? Maybe that's a little too harsh. <laughs> Could you tell us when Mr. Hilla came aboard? Surprise, fucking stroganoff don't got a third eye. Walking around looking like fucking Tian Shenhan. <laughs> What's in that's not your business. Come to think about it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now, and I've been in Cosmo's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from next door cabin. Maybe they've just been, you know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, it must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Alright. Cool. Are you on watch here all the time? Seaman Stroganoff? Duh. All the time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder. Could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Yet. Hmm. Cesaro san, do you understand that? It was clearly a no. I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. And did you hear any strange noises? Or sense of anything, sense anything was wrong in any way? I said, no. Sorry. Jesus. I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he couldn't catch my eye for a moment there. You lied, didn't you? You walked away for a second. What'd you do, chase a rat? <laughs> Went to the bathroom? Huh. This is enough. I cannot say no more. Oh. It's time for me to report to Captain. You must return to cabin. Yes, all right. Bulkhead to second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistle. Wait, what? When lobster whistles on top of the mountain, or as English say, when the pig flies. When lobster whistles on top of the mountain. What the fucking fuck? <laughs> yes, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. I'm gonna check this out. Look on top of the table. It really is huge. There's a pen, uh, there's a pen with it too. Yes, I'm sure that's the ship's log. Shall we have a little look around it? Look around it, my bad. Look through it, <laughs> my bad, around it. Yeah, let's look around the book. The writing is so neat and precise. Every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Hmm. You wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. Anyways, look here. Last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there was nothing to report. Hmm. Is it added into the... No, it's not. Okay. So he left, right? He, he peaced out for a hot second. So I'm just gonna... We're gonna go on through here. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Cosmos on wrote that he's... Okay, hold up. They're just going over shit we read already.
Why is there no answer? Shouldn't fucking Sherlock Shlomes be in there? No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help us with our inquiries. How annoying. Well, you know what you gotta do, Mikotaba? We gotta lift up that ventilator shaft and have you wiggle your little Asian self through there, okay? That will help out a lot. This looks like a plan for the SS Bureau. It shows each deck. Each deck. Look. The Bureau is a large scale steamship with triple skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering. <laughs> what a marvel. Did you watch the new Spider Man movie? I still haven't. I have no interest in that movie. Anyways, <laughs> well, it's been playing. It's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually. But how is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Are we really about to get into the fucking structure of a ship? No, that's really quite simple, Nautilus. Son, is it? Is it because it's hollow on the inside, right? Well, consider Japanese archipelago, the island of Japan. Yes. They're not metal, but they're enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than the ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Well, I suppose so. Oh, I thought she was going to go more deep into that. Well, we can't leave this room, it seems. Well, I don't think we can. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape. You never seen a circle before? <laughs> That's the emergency alarm. It's probably best to not touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it set alarm. Looks like though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, what are you doing, Nadahara son? You mustn't touch it. But this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. Yes, mother. I'm sorry. I wish everything would just stop. This ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect everyone else. What the fuck? What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman. Stand aside. I'm about to break the door down. Oh yeah, the scrawny man will. Great. Mr. Shlomes. I shan't be stopped. When it's f <laughs> when the fit is on- Wait, what? When the fit is on me, I revel in not in kicking doors off their hinges. What the fuck? Please, wait, Mr. Shlomes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? Then how, then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? But pray, can I kick? Don't you fucking dare look at me. I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. Yeah, just go masturbate in the bathroom or something, you fucking loser. Oh! Who, who are you? I think... I think we found... I think we found the fucking, uh, Russian revolutionary. Western gentleman, this man looks Russian to me. We... We heard a woman scream! A woman?! Don't be absurd! Alright, man, put the scissors down. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. Mm-hmm. True. This old man does appear to be the only person in here. But... That case... But in that case, we just screamed. Get out, all of you, now. You wouldn't happen to have a Russian ballerina in here, would you? Just, just, you know, would... Mm. Okay. Please excuse the intrusion, but dear Mr. Grimsby Royal... Hold up, I got it, what the... Give me a second. I just gotta. I just gotta. Alright. Okay, I just want to see if it was like his name's backwards or some shit. Yes, that's me. And you are? I am the one and only, the actual Herlock Shlomes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. 
I'm a great detective amongst great detectives, one who adorns the cover of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. Man uses the magazine like a business card. A detective? I do not trust detectives. Maybe because you're a fucking... Because <laughs> you're a fucking refugee. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady uh, concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So, might I be so bold as, uh, as to ask you to open the small travel case? Listen, she's a... Listen. She's a ballerina, not a contortionist, okay? What? Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk. Well, that one was like fucking three times the size of that, okay, jackass? Don't look at me. Oh, shit. Are you serious? Oh, my. Did you see that? Mr. Narahoro. Yes. The case just shook. Leave. Now. Otherwise, I'll call the steward. You sure you won't stab me first? So... This is Cosmo's neighbor, Mr. Grimsby Roylet. Roylot. Roylet. I don't fucking know. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. Listen, guys. I know I'm in handcuffs. I know she's a very petite little Japanese woman. And you're a lanky-ass Englishman. But if we all just jump him... Well, maybe if me and, and Shlomes jump him, she can open the trunk and we can check what's in there. Just, what the fuck are you doing? Do you have a moment, please, Mr. Shlomes? You need only address me as Shlomes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, anyways, Mr. Shlomes, what were you doing in there? Why? I was resting, of course. Resting. Indeed. I was con I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time. That you would need to call my great prowess of detection to start- Wait. What? Are you a stowaway too? Oh. It always seems that the hour is upon us. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Well, no, exactly, you're spot- Exactly? Did I just say that? <laughs> actually, you're spot on, for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Rilla, is clearly trying to hide something. Well, let's see, he has a stabbing utensil, yes, he's very- he's wearing a fucking- trench coat and shady ass glasses he has a rolled up newspaper that's very that's very uh, reminiscent of this right here so he's on edge for sure do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a russian hiding a secret i try to come up with a joke in my mind for that but i feel like if i say anything it would be racist <laughs> why the truth of course okay Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Come to imagine how the Russians will react- Wait, what? Oh, come to imagine, well. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh yes, please. Would I like to witness a man get stabbed today? Sure, why not? Well then. What are you about to see may well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. What? Could this man be a more he heck heck what? Heck hecknig? I what the fuck is that word? <laughs> Hackenic? What? I don't know. I don't even know. My my brain. 
portrayal, whatever that word is. Can you be more something portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness or Russian on account of his dubiousness? You saying Russian people are fucking suspicious? <laughs> I really don't think either of those things could be occurring to you or anyone. That's right. And Mr. Sloan's. I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read it is capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It's bias. It, it biases the judgment. I must have a complete silence. What are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? You want to kiss me? Ah, uh, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can only be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylet, I have reached two in con- What? Fuck. God damn it. In control- Fuck. <laughs> damn it. In control- God. In control- eh. Words. I want to kill myself sometimes. Whatever. I've reached two conclusions. What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. He has a he has a dog on board. Instantly. Instantly. I beat you to the punch already, Shlums. He has a dog in that case. A small little doggy. Huh? And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn. You are, at the very moment no less, in the midst of committing the most grievous crimes. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you release... As release. I keep every time I see that word, my mind goes to release. As you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? Huh. Oh, not a Hodo son. Never imagine I would witness one of Mr. Slum's great deductions with my own eyes. That that was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Slums. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? What in fad <laughs> Infatible twaddle. Oh, yes. I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Shlomes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the colors had drained from Mr. Royot's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Shlomes' conclusions were right. How could you know? How could I possibly know such things? You, w you wish to say? Very well then. I shall... Uh, God, same fucking word. Elucidate. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at the pair of conclusions. So, do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery? Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. What the fuck? <laughs> the great deduction. Game is afoot. Old man's identity. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylet, obviously, what catches the eyes in first place, is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want to do with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you... What? <laughs> the be copious beard you sport. Now moving on. 
the question. You're still kicking me in my fucking side, you little mutt. Stop it. <laughs> the question then begs it, begs this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of a magnificent beard, Mr. Royal? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, uh, regard, well, regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, and particularly the fascinating front page article. Which is, would be, which would appear you have read also, Mr. Roylet. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translations, the headline reads, Revolutionary Velen Bro- uh, Fuck. Bro- mm. Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extreme copious beard. Extremely copious beard. Having noticed the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond a doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, Velen Brushevich. Now that I've heard you myself... Wait, what? Not that I've heard of you myself. You understand? Wow. You dumb, dumb man. You cannot be way off topic. Wrongdoing. Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at the very moment, on the brink of committing the most grievous crime. And the proof of the crime is over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roiler. Taking awareness, people have a pro... A pro... God damn it. Propens... Fuck. Propensity? That's a new word. <laughs> to let their eyes stray, you see? Huh. As I assure you, the eye speaks so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies there in the few what? Right there in fruitive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents lay bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask, a little doggy? By my estimations. A young lady, perhaps. One slight, one slight enough to fit therein. Don't be absurd. And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me. We are not, a, we are not well suited for a life of crime, are we? Your carelessness, coup. Uh, listen, I know what a coup d'état is, but I don't even know what the fuck that says. Coup d'état? I don't know. Betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your fruitive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your travel case can equally be found in the pages of the newspaper. For there is another most stimulating article. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nicola... Pro oh God, Nicola... Oh God. Nicolina... Fuck. <laughs> Provlona. Kidnapping of a young ballerina. Thus concludes Herlokshalom's great deduction of the Russian enigma. Elementrisk. Wow. <laughs> Hackneyed. Hackneyed. Maybe that was the word. I don't know. It's weird. Cesaro-san. 
That wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, uh, the stories are full of Mr. Sloan's brilliant deductions, you know? But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Slums. Could you come over here for a moment? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, newspaper article, I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Ah, yes, I recall our discussion earlier. And at the time, I believe I told you... That the man is a revolutionary. Well able to revolutionize his own appearance. That's not what revolutionary means, you fucking idiot. In fairness to Mr. Slums, Mr. Rilla does look more like this man than you do. He does, but... The beard is off, facial structure is off, that man's quite taller, the glasses are different. You know? It's not the point. And another thing, that part about him abducting the ballerina? Indeed, a truly startling revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just a first glance, it's clearly too small. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? Do you mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15. 15?! Really? Huh. I see it. I can see it. Okay. I thought she was, like, at least in her 20s or something. <laughs> No, I didn't know. How could I? Hmm. Well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out of that case. Some year ago, I read something pertain uh, what? pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain lint lintness? Lintness. Lintness in their bodies. Vinegar? First, for such a sour bunch, it would surely be a simpli oh God. simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case. Oh dear. You might be, <laughs> you might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Slums. This whole thing is turning into a circus. Mr. Narahoda, something occurred to me about Mr. Slums' deduction just now. Oh, that he's fucking way off? I think his prize of observation are well magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. Almost like he's pulling it out of his ass. It's just where he directs his attentions and his logic, that seems a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Mrs. Sada. It's just one or two key words in his deductions that seem to be that seem to let him down. So I was wondering. If we might perhaps tactically switch them for alternatives, what did you think? Hmm. Switch some key words and his deductions? Yes. But very tactfully. I feel sure... I feel sure we could do that. We unlock the true genius of Mr. Slum's great deduction. Precisely the thought that I was going... That was going with my own mind. Okay, great. This man's a lot of work. I feel like he's going to be around us a lot. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. And you, my good fellow. Sorry. Take a moment to look at your wrist. Oh, fuck off. My wrist. What? When did you do that? Uh, how, how did he... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. I don't believe it. Mr. Slums, you're a marvel. When I was looking away, he fucking tucked my cuffs off. I can't trust this man. <laughs> That's too sly. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrist when you're finished. Oh, don't you fucking dare. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. 
So, let us begin. Herlock Schlomes is proud to present his Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. Course correction. Hold it, Schlomes! The old man's identity. Revolutionary on the run. So, the dubious looking Russian men, obviously, what catches the eye in first place? Is the enormous pair of shears. Now we ask ourselves, could possibly one do with an implement? The answer, of course, staring us in the face. You are on the verge of causing uh, using the shears to cut away the copious beard. Hmm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? Maybe. I doubt that some apparently, apparently you never had your hair cut by a ghetto barbershop before. <laughs> I call sorcery with those handcuffs. You can't break these cuffs, Loams. You're right, I tuck them off. What? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylet either. Which means, I suppose that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch the keywords around here, Narahodo, and see if it helps the matter. All right, how about, oh, how about, <laughs> but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylet. I wonder if it's really his beard that he intends to use the shears on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit, my bad, that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Sherlock, Sherlock, my bad, Mr. Schlom's deduction better, then what? Then I'll leave the rest to your capable hands, Nanahoto san. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyways, let's see if there's anything we can use to switch around in the last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Royla really going to use those enormous shields for? Hmm. <laughs> you look behind him, just long golden hair. Oh my god. You for real? Just hiding. Uh, guess he just dyed his hair, huh? Oh man, even if you look between it, you can still kind of see it. What the? What's this? It looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks. No, 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 the color is not the point. The point is, what's it doing on the back of Mr. Whirlit's head? And how, how's it growing out from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that's true. So it's stunningly beautiful and stunning. He's not. No, 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 no. It's stupid. It's stupid. I was going to say something stupid. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Something's definitely not right here. Huh. Okay. All right, well, yes. the golden hair. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Motherfucker comes in snapping his goddamn fingers. What the fuck? All right. <laughs> you are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed. You have a double team in this, man. <laughs> you hit him from the front, I hit him from the back. You've identified the precise details I was intending to expose. Such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. Alright, so I was gonna listen. When I sat there, I was like, I'm gonna say something stupid. Right? He's the ballerina. <laughs> The reason I wanted to go back on that was because looking at his face, I'm like, I'm like, you know, you can obviously put on a beard and mustache and stuff like that. But the nose didn't seem to fit the bill. Unless she's wearing a fake nose, right? Judging from the length and sheen of your hair. From the length? Did I say like that? Length. Length. Well. One still very much in her youth. Oh no. If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. 
The question then begs this, why would you decide to rid yourself of this magnificent, of those magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea the old man was really a young woman in disguise. What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise, not a Hodosan. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing the facts with Mr. Schloms. I'm just doing what we agreed on. I'm not having fun or anything. Yeah, that's why you started snapping your fucking fingers like you were at a goddamn jazz concert. This is strictly business. Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyways, let's focus on the next part of Shalom's deduction, shall we? The evidence that he picked out doesn't seem to fit the facts at all. No, that's true, given that Mr. Rillet is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be the merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the... The, dedu uh, the, 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 the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence with something else. Something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For example, I mean, for the reason I got. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though, as I've, as I either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Yes, I'll do my best. All right. Well. Article about the ballerina. Yes! The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right. You've hit the nail on the head. Renowned Primarina Ballerina. Prim primarina. Prima. God, fuck. It's a tongue twister. Renowned. Prim, prim, I got Prima, fuck, <laughs> ballerina of Novavish Ballet. Dis, uh, dis, uh, God damn, I can't read. Disappears from Shanghai. Shit. <laughs> it would appear we finally been able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of Novavish Ballerina Prima. Oh God, Novavish Ballet Prima Ballerina. Miss Nicolana. God, Nico Lin God, yeah, whatever the fuck, you know who I'm talking about. Oh God, don't cut yourself. Ugh, <laughs> I don't like the way that tugged out. It is a fake nose, huh? Why, hello there. And then the FBI comes knocking down my door because I just remember that she's 15 years old. Jesus. <laughs> my name is Nina. I am Nicolana Pav Pavlona. But please, I beg of you, don't tell anyone. Eh, your secret's safe with me. Unless you're a murderer. So what, she has a dog with her? She has a little dog. Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing the most grievous crimes. You're gonna get a phone call from Chris, from Chris Hansen. He's like, why don't we just take a seat right there? And I'll be like, hey man, you want a slice of pizza? He's like, no, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm good. And the proof of this crime over there. Oh yes, Miss Pavlona. Taken unaware, people have pro God damn, I still know that word. Prospinity? Prospinity? God. Prospinity? And I assure you, the eyes speak much more elegantly and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies here in the, f in the fruit of Glance Falls. Yeah, words. The proof of your crime sits before your very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. No, he's right about that. This woman's a ballerina, and she's right. Um, and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly, she can't be inside the traveling case as well. No, that's not right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? 
she could have also stoned the tiara. <laughs> I can see I'm gonna have to step step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. You seem to look pleased, Narahoto san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sloans? Stop it! Anyways, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Oh! <laughs> she has the tiara, you little fucking thief. Wow! Look at that dazzling tiara. I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, Narahoto-san, try it on. What? Me? Isn't it unusually girly to wear tiaras? Would you like to try it on? Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does the tiara, why does the tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Uh, present it, please. I would like to present... Yes! There we go. <laughs> The proof of your crime is surely this tiara. <laughs> I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in Nova in Novavitch Ballet, is it not? Indeed. It would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in the newspaper article. So what was she doing? She was stowing away not stowing away. So was she running away to start a new life in Great Britain with the money she'll make from the tiara? Maybe. And if the report of it is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary... The crime you have committed is theft. Oh no. Yes, you left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. Take it easy on the girl, guys. She's only 15. I have no one. No family, no friends. I'll be your friend. You know, with consent, of course. <laughs> we'll have Chris Hansen hanging out with us, make sure nothing happens. I'm all alone, and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. Oh, you didn't steal it. Okay. It was a present from, how do you say, an earl? Or per Parisa? Parisa? It belongs to me. I don't get it. I don't know what that is. Honestly. This girl is only 15 years old, and she ran away all by herself? She must have been extremely lonely. Alright. I'll tell you everything. There's no point in hiding it now. <laughs> He's like, shut up, I'm still deducing. <laughs> Come on, let's not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? What do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open the traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that exists some reason why you would wish to remain in close. Is that not is that not so, Miss Pavlona? Pazl Pavlova, whatever. My dear girl, there's no sense in playing games with me. It's to playing these fucking games. <laughs> Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have ever laid eyes on them. Dear me. We are not well suited to life of crime, are we? Your careless coop I still don't know that fucking word. Your careless coop betrays you! Once again, you need only follow your fruit of glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason why he refused to open the case is written in the book on the shelf. What the fuck? He's completely changed tact of his deductions now. I think Mr. Slums is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe. But why is he suddenly brought to the bookshelf into this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, don't you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true. But still, 
Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in the direction I noticed it myself. Then, there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. It must be somewhere in the same area of her gaze. I agree. That's the only answer. Whatever is she hiding inside the case? Should be revealed by following her gaze. It's a dog. She has a little doggy. These are the rules of passage for traveling aboard the SS Bureau. Passengers must not keep weapons of other dangerous or other dangerous objects in their cabin. Pets are also strictly forbidden. There was exactly uh, that was exactly the same notice in our cabin too. I wonder what happens if you break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment would be severe, not a Hodosan. You'd probably be left to drift in the frozen cold sea, or shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. Fuck off. So I've actually been s serving time for weeks now, have I? Hmm. Yeah, surely. Yes. Let me see the little doggy. I want to see it. Yes. The reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the pass in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside the case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I. As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time. It weebles and wobbles, but it never falls down. But no weapons or other dangerous items would move on their own, unless it's a cursed sword of some sort. Which leaves only one possibility, Ms. Pavlona. I keep saying Pavlona. P Pavlova? Yeah. Inside your travel case. It's the last item listed as forbidden in the vessel rules of passage. A pet. I want to see the pet. What you got? Watch it be like a fucking hamster. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a dog if it's like making noises and shit, right? So the reason I the reason I kept saying it was a dog is because the moment I walked in the room, I glanced my eyes down, I looked down at the lower left corner, and you can see a water bowl on the floor. And I'm like, oh, there's a dog in there. <laughs> it's a dog or a cat or something. No, I'm not Grimsley Roylot of Roylot. Grillsby, or whatever the fuck's name is. My real name is Nikolana Pavlova. Everything you said it was correct. Ah, you absconded during one of your goddamn Absconded? That's the word? Yeah, absconded. During one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later, the same night, you stole a, you stole aboard this vessel. Stole? That's the right terminology, I guess? Which could have been which couldn't have been easy. The beer is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? Oh no, someone surely noticed her, and someone here is helping her out. 100%. In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman. And you intend to sir a oh god, can't read. And you intend to sever all links with your past by severing your long hair. Yet, to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. My personal recommendation is to leave it well alone. Yes, it's very beautiful. So, if it was just you, about to cut off your own hair, who was it that let out the scream we heard from outside the cabin? And that variable tinkering of a bell? Why, none other than the young ladies, uh, uh, than the young ladies, naturally. Can't read. I'm gonna kill myself one of these days. More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. I was sure that they would come looking for me. That's why I decided to, how do you say, disguise myself, so no one would recognize me. As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man. I see. I put on the fur hat and fake beard. Then, just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper 
right on the page, there's a picture of me. Oh! So the revolutionary guy is nowhere to be seen. He's not part of this. They've mistaken her disguise for the revolutionary. And that too, of course. I was so frightened I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearance completely, they would find me. What are you doing? My dog is like sprawled out all over me. He's supposed to be sitting here very calmly. Meanwhile, he's spread eagle everywhere, kicking me in my side. So I decided to cut all my hair off as fast as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and... At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked... What? Annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Things happen like that sometimes. <laughs> Susano's just like, Well, it really do be like that sometimes, huh? It indeed do be like that sometimes. Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I like to know. What the hell's in that trunk? What exactly do you have inside that traveling case? You were right. It's my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. I'll be your friend. We can be friends. Or at least you and Mikoto can be friends. Hmm. Please don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say it to any of the crew, your secret's safe with us, I assure you. But in return, you must tell us in as much detail as you can muster about the events of last night. I want to see the dog, though. Let me see the dog, or cat, or whatever it is. It's probably suffocating in there. <laughs> yes, all right, I'll tell you. Well, Mr. Narahoto? Wasn't it something, Mr. Slum's great deduction? Fuck you, I helped out with that! Dog just stretching. What, my dog or that one? One in the case. Because my dog, he's not just stretching, he's like trying to fall asleep next to me, but he's doing every possible thing he can to get in my way. He's poking his little butt up in the air, he's spreading eagle, he's flipping around on his back, wiling out. Kicking me in my damn side. You're an asshole. He's an asshole. I love him. <laughs> Certainly something else. I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible. Ah, uh, and one more thing. Oh, yes. What? You put the cuffs back on, didn't you? You bastard. My. You're an asshole, I hate you. Your hands are cuffed again. What? But, but how? True to my word, I have restored your shackles. When and why? There's still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Narahoto. Come on, Mikotaba. You gotta at least, you at least gotta be on my side. Sorry to say, can't be helped at the moment. <laughs> he can't be, really. Anyways, let's listen to what Ms. Pavlova has to say. I can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled band that Cosmosan wrote about in his diary really was. All right. Hey, miss, you can trust me, for I am a student. Wait a minute! I'm a student! Oh, never mind. <laughs> I had a moment. I was like, wait a minute, I'm a student. I forgot, how old is Narahoto <laughs> for a moment? How old is Ryo? <laughs> Fucking uh, Ryosuke? Jesus. And then I look at Cosmo, it's like 23, I'm like, I'm around Cosmo's age, aren't I? I'm probably like a year younger. But you can be friends with me, Kodava, she's 16, she knows your plight. <laughs> can I show you this? I'm actually a university student from the Empire of Japan, you see. Empire of Japan? Okay. Never heard that term before. That means nothing to me. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> no, why would it? Mr. Narahoda. If you're determined to flaunt your Yume badge, at least choose a Japanese person who might recognize it. <laughs> I was I was thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Mr. Sato, can I show you this? Maybe later. <laughs> oh, damn it. I could show Inspector Hosonika too. That's what I did earlier. Damn it. That's great. That's awesome. I love it. I'm gonna show my badge to everyone. All right, let's talk. So what happened last night? That moment of silence with me going like, wait, so I can show it to her. <laughs> Did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man who died, he was a friend of mine. Oh. And that's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example? Perhaps people talking? Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest. Perhaps its steam engine exploded. Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that had happened. Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. Were we drugged? I'm sorry, but all I can think about last night was what I had done and whether they would have found me. Okay. Alright, because I was thinking, I was like, I ate the food, she ate the food. <laughs> if she don't remember anything at all last night, then we were drugged. <laughs> I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. Alright, so what are you running away for? You've run away from your ballet company, have you? The Novovich Ballet? Yes. I'm traveling to Great Britain, and from there, I want to go to America. I like you, you're cool! She's like, I want to go to the land of fireworks, and hamburgers, and guns. <laughs> I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet, I swear. <laughs> I will start a new life. You wish to forget a challenging proposition. When you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But the tiara is mine. I need it to live. You're going to sell it for money, right? I have no money of my own. Yep, there you go. The Novovich Ballet gives us only a little food and water. And we must dance all over the world. Oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself? Yes. And the crew of this ship, they have all been kind to me. They've let me come on aboard, and they said I could hide in this cabin. Yep, they totally are helping you out. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. Miss Pavlova, you sure somebody here is not trying to set you up for murder? What do you think about it, Mr. Narahoda? Me? Oh, well, yeah, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum, I'm not sure, but... Conundrum. Miss Pazlova, allows me to pose you a riddle. According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you abandoned from the ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. When did you board this vessel? <laughs> someone, uh, someone must have surely Surely fucking just like said, oh, yeah, man, you can take my cabin and just peaced out. <laughs> However, the SS Bureau stopped by no port last night. Oh, really? 
That it. That's it, of course. So how is it, pray, that you come to be aboard? Now that I think about it, the crewman outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. Hmm. It's none of your business. Most curious indeed. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. What? I'm sorry? The hell was that? It's how the Russian newspaper described one of my performances. And that's how I came here, too. I descended from the heavens, because I am an angel. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Mr. Sloan's once said, I never can rest the touch of... Wait, what? <laughs> I can... Hold up. I totally fucked that up. Mr. Sloan's once said, I never can resist a touch of dramatic. A touch of the dramatic. Seems Miss Pavlova is the same. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to deduction. Or detection, my bad. Words once said by myself. A quote from the wonderfully extravagant advertisement for The Adventures of Herlock Sloams, in fact. Yes, yes, Mr. Snow, Mr. Showy. Anyways, it doesn't look like Ms. Pavlova is going to tell us what really happened. Alright, so what about this friend? Is it a dog? It's a dog, right? So this friend you mentioned inside your traveling case. Is, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board, according to the rules of passage. Oh, please, don't tell anyone. Don't tell any of the crew. If they found my precious... Then the burly Russian would... Would burst... Burst? Best? Bester? That's a word. <laughs> uh, well, best... I, I don't even fucking know. Will do something themselves in unison to throw you and your cage overboard. Your cage? Your case overboard, no doubt. I think they would make a special exception for her. So reassuring, Mr. Sloans... What sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? Yes, it's a dog. No! <laughs> it's a cat? What is it? Maybe an adorable little rabbit? No. Well, obviously it needs a water bowl, so what? what's in there? And it's strong enough to move the case around. Huh, you credit Russians as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh. Don't they have small rabbits there? You may well ask. I have no idea. Haha, <laughs> great. You two are, two are miserable blunders. Blunders? Burglars, my bad, burglars. What? I can't read! Help! Two are miserable when it comes to understanding the nature of a young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken. Really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call, daily fresh eggs, and when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the one's needs for substance. So, you eat your friends. I'll remember that. Of course it's not a fucking chicken. Is it a, is it a fucking hamster? Do you got a hamster in there? Hmm. Well, it would appear this friend's identity is closely guarded secret not to be revealed. Just open a fucking trunk. She obviously doesn't quite trust us yet, so it is a dog. Something I should show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light onto it. Hmm. Okay. Something I should show her. Crime scene. Huh. 
Hey, can you tell me about the speckle band? Oh my bad, I gotta fucking go to present. This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary? Yes, and he wrote it he wrote it in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> alright. Catch you later, Breezy. Thanks for stopping by. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think. Faint whistling sound. It could be a it could be a bird. Right? Or a snake. And then a few minutes later, what looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator. You got a snake in there? Oh, you got a snake with you? Speckled band. I don't understand. Strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin, you see. Is it a snake? Maybe that's what the speckled band was. It's a snake, isn't it? She's part of Slytherin. I knew it. It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected. Oh. Miss Pavlova? Has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band the victim mentioned... Uh, God. The victim mentioned means something to you? Or the whistling sound? Speckled band and whistling sound. Snakes can't make whistling sounds, can they? Speckled band. Huh. No. I don't know anything. You're a liar. Oh. Why are you lying? Ah, shit. We're in trouble. Excuse me, Mr. Roylet. Yes, what is it? Well, I was fast. Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once, please. All right, I will come. You want me to leave, don't you? What? You must leave now. Oh no, it's fine. Don't mind us. Yes, please, don't worry yourself, Miss R Mr. Roylet. Get out! The passenger said out. <laughs> or you want me to throw you out? Ugh, it looks like we'll have to leave. What a pity. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. And that is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. To be continued. Ooh. Spicy. My dog is now laying on his back right next to me and he's like snoring. He's stretching now. All right. Gotta figure out what the fuck that speckled ban is. I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. I wish we managed to find some clue as to what that speckled ban might have been. We didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine that we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past the sailor guarding the door. Distract him with a potato. <laughs> He's clearly glaring at us, as if to say, don't even think about it. Don't you do it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Where the fuck is Shlomes? Well, what happened to our great detective friends? Where'd he go? Oh, yeah. He's completely disappeared. When did he do that? slipped away as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring that these were securely back on my wrist. Alright. Well, uh, I don't think
think we can leave. I don't think I'm allowed to leave anyways. So I guess we'll just head on back into, into our cabin. Looks like they're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject. I wonder if Inspector Hosonika is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, Narahoro-san? Don't you remember what he said about allowing you, uh, allowing you out of the cabin to investigate? He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he lay his life on the line for you. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. You never know. I only know one way to call him. We call him like... Oh, he's in here. <laughs> I was gonna ring the bell. Alright. Oh my fucking god, what happened to you? Oh, you're back. Inspector, what happened to you? Your face! Please, don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Made by a bear, maybe? When I told the captain that I had given you permission to investigate, he told me to... He told me he pummeled me with his fist and then tossed me overboard. What? But the pummeling was over in a flash. He must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Jesus, I didn't think this would actually happen. Looks like he was looks like he wasn't joking when he said he lay his life on the line. Well, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little bit about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh. I bumped into the man claiming to be the great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like... Herlock Schloms? I don't think he was German, though. Ah, that explains it. Shall we compare notes, then? We can tell you what we found. Yes, let's do it. Kasonika, you and I are gonna be best friends, aren't we? Alright, I know you guys fucking hurt that shit. That's my dog snoring next to me, making noises in his sleep. Let me put the microphone near him, see if you can hear him. I don't know if you can hear that or not. He only makes it, he only makes it when I start talking too. That's the weird thing. I sat there quiet and he looked at it. <laughs> He was like, what is that, a mic? Now he's making a shit ton of noise. Oh, you little bastard. Oh, I hate you. Alright, what about the cabin next door? What? Nikolana Pavlova? She's in the cabin next door. Oh, do you know who she is? Please. What self-respecting ballet fan wouldn't know the grateful, graceful angel? Oh, God. Please don't die on me. Oops, I think I'm ups I upset up here. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case, at least. Oh, no, 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 far from it. Oh, how? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? Well, I don't think she did it. But there's definitely something. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Oh no. Oh, come on. Come on, there's gotta be something. Oh, come on, there's gotta be something here. Oh. Like a snake bite or something. It would add up. All right, hey, little, little bit of theory craft here, right? What if, let's say she did have a pet snake, 
And let's say, well, it can be a little dangerous, right? There would probably be more blood though, to be honest. But whatever. It crawls through the vent, gets in the room, freaks out, you know? Attacks Cosma, complete accident. She runs in the room, or at least she would probably be a good enough side to fit through the vent because she would chase after her pet or whatever the fuck. Goes in the room, looks, sees there's a dead man on the floor, goes, oh shit. And then, and then, uh, you know, she probably, probably notices uh, us in the cabin and she, she pins it on us. Nah, there's no way it can be. No, maybe that's just too much, right? I'm overthinking it. She can't be guilty. Technically, she wouldn't be guilty, though, if it was just a mistake. But anyways, I don't think, I don't think that would, no, come on. She's too much of a sweetheart, <laughs> even though I know nothing about her. Oops, nah, I definitely upset him. Inspector, have your investigations in here prove fruitful? By the way, I noticed something when going into that cabin. Both, uh, her fucking, uh, bookshelves were knocked over too, so. If I'm honest, there's very little more that I can do. Our duty is to make sure that the scene isn't disturbed, ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So, I'm just keeping watch here, trying not to take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, there is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Oh, what? Yes, do tell us, Inspector, please. Alright, what do we got? What is this new information you have, Inspector? It's this. The Bureau's medical office officer has finished his examination on the body and managed to obtain the report. Oh, Cosma's post-mortem report. Cosma. Yep. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to cervic vertebrae. It's what's written in the report. Cervical vertebrae? His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. Oh, he got strangled by a fucking snake. Jesus. There was no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it turns out they found no trace of poison in the system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Nothing had been found as of yet, but the fact is there's no sign of a wound. What a snake? Mm. What a snake? Strangling you? You know, would it leave a wound? Would it leave any type of marks? Probably, maybe not. Because of its, because how its uh, scaly ass skin is and how slimy it is, slippery. Oh man, don't tell me he got choked out by a fucking snake. It was Slytherin. House Slytherin did it. God damn it. That hurts me dearly because I'm also part of House Slytherin. <laughs> Suggests it may have been a blunt object, something that wouldn't leave a mark. The snakes are pretty blunt. Oh, I see. All the body, uh, all the body nerves run through the spine and the brain. A, l a strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. It is possible, and no obvious wound would be left. Poor Cosmo. I have a second copy of the report. If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I trust you. Aww. Thanks, Inspector. See, someone trusts me, Mikotoba. Jesus. After all, if I didn't trust you, I'd never have agreed to leave, let you leave this cabin in the first place, now would I? Huh. 
Oh, someone's feeling a little fucking sad over there. Postmortem report has been given to me. Thanks, Asonaga. I knew I can count on you, unlike other people. Alright, sometime between 1 a.m. and a little past 2. A little past 2. So he's fighting for his life for like... <laughs> for like, what, 30 minutes? A little bit past 2, so about 30 minutes this dude was fighting for his life. <laughs> Jesus fuck, man. Resulting in instant death, the victim's neck was almost certainly broken as a result of a strong blow to the area. Alright. No traces of poisons or injuries. Right now, that's the only theory that I have, a working theory. If it was, you know... If it was a broken neck, then... It, makes, it would make no, it would make uh, sense that, uh, you know... It would make, you know, you know what I'm getting at here. <laughs> uh, it would make sense that he wasn't hit in the back of the head, so we can, we can get rid of that one. Oh, Mr. Slums. Uh, was, uh, what? I'm sorry, I had a moment. Mr. Slums was here, was he? Yes. He seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he creeped about on the floor to investigate. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have became bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, no. Now that you mention it. Yes, just one thing. But he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish. Was all he said. Hmm. The stain on the ground is shoe polish. Shoe polish. I wonder what he meant. Definitely the stain on the ground. It was when he was over there by the piece of broken glass. Yes. Perhaps he was talking about this bright colored mark. Ah, yes. That must be it. But how could Mr. Sloan's have known that it's shoe polish? That leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is it, Sasato-san? Well... Cosmo-sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tin hue. Dark tan? A sort of dark brownish red, then? Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Oh! How come you never repaired my shoes? <laughs> that mark was made by the polish on Cosmo's shoes as they scuffed on the floor. Hmm. Shoe mark. That's really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, that might be for the best. Thank you. Poor inspector. You look exhausted. Oh, no. Well... Yeah... I feel terrible that I failed to protect the saki san It was my responsibility. Well, I mean, no one could have suspected a snake breaking his neck. <laughs> of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friend. The truth is... I seem to have had a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. So we were drugged. We were so drugged. A heavy head. That's interesting. My head's still throbbing too. Something in the food has to have been something in the food. And if she came in last night, then she wouldn't have eaten the food, uh, that being Pavlova. Hmm. Alright. Well, what else can we inspect here? Reinspect this? Oops, I pressed the wrong button. My bad. Reinspect this. Ah, it really is such a beautiful color, this glass. It looks like whatever it was... Ah, uh, God. It looks like whatever it was has broken clean in two. 
But the other half is somewhere to be seen. And there is somewhere to be seen? What the fuck? Did I just have a stroke? <laughs> oh, wrong button. Nope, nope, no auto. My bad. Uh, I wanted to look at the log. How do I pull that? Oh, history. History. Uh, Borgo Zoo, but the other half is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> nowhere to be seen. And then there's this bright colored mark. Which is shoe polish, according to the great detective. I suppose it must be from Cosmo Shan's shoes. Maybe. But what I'd like to know is... How can the detective be so sure that it's shoe polish and not something else? Because he's a great detective, of course, I'm... <laughs> Nikodaba. It's hardly a reason, is it? Alright. So, it's clear that these letters were written with the ink that was somehow spilt on the floor. And they spell the Russian word for wardrobe. It does seem to be an, an unambiguous pointer to you, Hodo-san, as you were sleeping in there. But to be truly unambiguous, it should have just spelled out my name, don't you think? Well, either way, one fact remains. It's hard to imagine that Cosmosama would have written his last words or word in Russian. Which begs the question of who did write it? Fucking calling shit out left and right. That's what I am. I'm awesome. Reinspect this. So this ventilator joins Ms. Pavlova's cabin. Yes, that's right. And just a few minutes before he died, Cosmo saw something emerging from it. A fucking snake. Motherfucker came in, he said, I'm in here to kill you. The speckled ban, as he described it. Wait. Faint whistle. Snake. Speckled ban. What if she had a little snake charming thing, right? She's a little whistle, be like, come over here, snake. And then it wasn't listening. Or maybe someone controlled the snake with the whistle, and then it went and it killed them. If only Miss Pavlova had been able to shed some light on it, but she seemed to have she seemed as baffled as we are. Yes, I wonder if she's telling us everything though. Of course not. I'm not sure. I know most people aboard would say the same about me, but there was something about the woman that didn't sit right with me. Right. All the books provided for passengers occupying this cabin neatly arranged on the shelf. They were all over the place when we first looked around, if you remember. Oh yes, and you tidied them up, didn't you? Way to fuck up the crime scene. You have to look after the ship's property. Unruly behavior in the cabins lead to damage. But it really wasn't me who knocked them over. Well, anyways, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up. I can't relax when things are untidy. Yeah, way to fuck up a crime scene. This is where Cosmo spent his final moments writing his diary. 1.23 a.m., I can hear a faint whistling sound. Snake charming. 1.35 a.m., what looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A snake! Look at his... Look at his writing here on this page. It's almost impossible to believe that he's gone. Cosmo-san left us valuable clues in these words, I'm sure of it. We have to solve this mystery, Narahodo-san. We will. It's a snake. It's a snake, it's a snake, it's a snake, it's a snake. I'm gonna keep saying it. Until someone proves me wrong, damn it. Sword, food. Uh, the rules of passage for traveling aboard SS Bura. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. So by bringing her pet on board, Miss Pathlova has broken the rules. Duh, rules. <laughs> she called it her friend, didn't she? Yes, although we don't know what form this friend takes as of yet. It's a snake. I'm also certain that whatever it is is inside the traveling cases in her cab. I'm sorry, did I just have a fucking stroke? Let me reread that. <laughs> I'm almost certain that whatever it is, it's inside the traveling case in her cabin. I did read that right, didn't I? Hmm. A friend. There's more to this than it seems, I think. And what about you? You gonna say something to me? 
You. Where'd you go? Oh, sorry. I just went to the next door cabin to investigate. Why? Who gave you permission for this? Um, well, inspect. I mean, uh, Seaman Hasunaga did. Hmm. That new Japanese, was it? Later, I will roll him into ball and throw him into cold room. Oh, no. I just got him into more trouble. Phew, he's going back to guarding the door. I hope Inspector Honoska doesn't find himself in too much trouble on our account. He's really gone out of his way to help us, hasn't he? Remind me to buy him lunch later. <laughs> if he's alive. When we get back to Japan, we'll have to take have to take him for a steak for a steak at Lakane Val. Ah. Even Rinosuke has the same idea. That could be very long time from now, Narahoro san. Well, they'll probably throw my ass back to Japan or just leave me somewhere. Oh. Traveling case. That over there. The wardrobe. This. I don't think there's anything else we can really do, right? Hmm. Yeah, I can't go back out. Uh huh. And there's something I'm missing in here. You know, look around. Oh, what was the uh, controls that popped up for me? Mystery options. Look around. Okay. Uh, the table again, maybe? No. That's good. They're telling me it's good. The sword. That's good. That's good. The door. That's good. Talking to you is good. Would I talk to Hosonika again? No, that's good as well. Check the check the ink, right? In the trunk. And up there. And the bells. Glass. What am I missing? You give me check marks all over the place, damn it. Hmm. What do we have here? Magnifying glass. Nothing to really point out here. Hmm. I'm investigating as much as I can. Hmm. Written ink. rice, which, you know, we looked at that already. My pen. Nothing new here for us, right? People. <laughs> Alright. These are our characters. He's 34? What the fuck? He looks like he's my age. 34? Really? Tw he's older than the inspector? Look at him! Damn! Alright. Really. Nothing for me here. And I don't think I can leave the cabin at all. Yeah. I would like to talk to someone, but I don't... Huh. Really? Bullshit. There's no... There's no examine button for that. I just gotta scan the whole area then. Because there's something... There's definitely something I missed, right? Maybe if I just check the wardrobe. Two weeks since we set sail from Japan. We really didn't load inside the wardrobe the entire time. Hmm. Suppose not. Although it must be rather exciting making a voyage. Yep. Yeah, nothing different really from here. Hmm. Let me try heading towards the door. Maybe something will activate. When I went for help and the crewman forced the door open. 
Mm -hmm. Nothing different. All right. This is the time where I wish that I had something. Something for, uh, you know how Danganronpa has their, like, you know, check out the area button dedicated. You gotta be kidding me. What am I missing in here? Maybe there's something that the glass goes to that I just haven't noticed? The food, the sword. I wanted to check this stuff, but I guess we can't. Calligraphy. Nothing else on the uh, shelf, really? Can't talk to that guy, because that's... What am I looking for? Come on. Come on, Ace Attorney. Sonica, anything for me? What if I show you something? Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I have to go to present, right? Oh, I can't even present anything to him, can I? No, I can't. Fuck. And you have nothing for me, yes? Huh. What if I... What if I ring the bell? Maybe someone will show up? Highly doubt it. Let's try ringing the bell. Shall we give it a try? Yes. Nope. No answers. Huh. Uh-oh. Can't check the bed, can I? Let's get it thoroughly. But whatever. Hmm. Maybe. Oh. Ah, oh, damn it. I thought I saw something new. Shit. Alright, well, I don't think there's anything new in here. Then the answer lies in the evidence. Maybe if we try re-examining this. No. You drew the characters for the paper seal, didn't you, Narahodo-san? Such bold, vivid strokes you made. You're looking at a man who came aboard inside a trunk. Those brushstrokes needed to make a statement. If they found me in the wardrobe, the Russians would have hurled me into the freezing cold ocean. I'm sure none of the crewmen would have done anything like that. Hmm, well, I'm not so sure. They would have forced you to wash dishes in the gallery until you were on death's door or something like that. Wash dishes until I was on death's door? Jesus. That's a lot of dishes. And then it's the sticky rice on the back, right? Yeah, must be remnants of glue or something. That's right. Pulverized rice. Yes, okay. Nothing new there. And I can't really check any other pieces of evidence, can I? Yeah, it's just that. This. Can't examine that. We've seen all we could here. Nothing new here. And nothing new for us here. Damn it, Great Ace Attorney. You put me out of stalemate. I have nowhere to look. I don't know what to do. You're giving me nothing. And I'm not allowed to leave the cabin. Just look at every, just try and look at every inch, every corner of the room. 
Maybe I'll find something. What am I missing? What am I missing, damn it? The chair behind him? No. Candle? The horn? What do I do? What? Why was it grayed out? Why was it grayed out? My mind! Ah. Look, Naruhoro-san. Seaman Stroganov has gone. Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who's always crossing his arms and glaring at us? Oh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. Tra-la-la. tra la 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 <laughs> Did you hear that? Sound like someone singing. Tra-la-la-la-la-la. <laughs> oh, you touched my tra-la-la. I did it, the great detective went- Oh, God. This caroling. I know that lark-like voice. Well, never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. We must seize it. Because opportunity comes once in a lifetime. <laughs> Let's get inside Miss Pavlova's cabin while we can. Definitely. Before that, Stringly Knot Crewman comes back. String Stringly Knot? <laughs> it's Stroganov. Not Stringly Knot. Oh, right. Oh my fucking god, the case is open. Ah, oh, god. Damn it, the one thing I wanted to look at. And there's clothes. Miss Pav Pavlov isn't back yet. Cesaro san. Oh. Where's she going? Hey! What are you doing? Those are her private things. It's not a moment to waste, Naruhoto san. We must investigate as quickly as we can. I suppose you're right. For Cosmo's sake. Not just for Cosmo. What do you mean? Can't be long now until we arrive at port in Hong Kong. I... Don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. Really? We must solve this case, Narahoro. By ourselves, if we have to. Alright. Yeah, we will. Alright, Mikotoba, we got this. First things first. Oh my, Miss Pavlova's case is open. It's completely empty inside, but according to the great detective's great deductions, she was hiding her special friend in here. Yes, a friend that she had to keep secret because you're not allowed to bring animals aboard the SS Bureau. I wonder what kind of animals she had in there. And more to the point, where is it now? Hmm. Any traces of fur in there? These are knocked over. All the books have toppled over together. Look, every single one. Do you think that's a god of the sea, perhaps? He toppled too, huh? It's exactly the same as the bookcase next door. In Cosmo's cabin. Perhaps? Perhaps Ms. Pavlova was practicing a difficult ballet pose and fell against the bookcase. I don't know. Would she really be practicing ballet the same night she ran away from her ballet company? Especially after she says she doesn't want to remember it? Alright then. It must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked them all over in a fit of rage. Again? Not everything bad that happens on the ship is because of me, you know. Well, anyways, I set them all straight again in here, too. I don't like seeing things in disarray. Stop it. You gotta stop that. We can't let them know we were in here. Ugh. 
whatever. What's in the bag? Damn it. Gotta be accurate with the cursor. Naruhodo-san, are you there? Sorry, I'm right here, yeah? Why? Oh, good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe. Mikotaba? Now's not the time. It's no place like home. Believe me, I don't have some strange compulsion to jump inside every wardrobe I see, you know. Well, anyways, I'm not sure anyone could fit inside this one. It's full of beautiful outfits, I suppose they're all stage costumes. Hmm. I was rather I was rather hoping we might find Ms. Pavlov's friend hiding in there. But no such luck. Well, to be fair, clothes weren't in there before, it was pretty empty. So she most recently threw that in there. Check the vent. So this ventilator connects to Cosmo's cabin next door. Any slime marks? Slime trails? Yes. Though, though the fool of... God, I can't, I can't even fucking read. Though, what a fool... Uh, God. Damn it! <laughs> yes, although, what a fool a shipbuilder must be to open a ventilator into another's room. Maybe. It's so that if there's a gas leak next door, the occupant of this cabin would notice and raise the alarm. Or, the occupants of both cabins would die of gas poisoning. Hmm, that is a possibility. Anyways, last night, Cosmo wrote that he saw a speckled band coming out of this ventilator. It's a fucking snake. A little snack and it attacked. It was meant to protect. Check the water bowl. I wonder what the little saucer's doing on the floor. Yes, it doesn't look like it's been dropped, more like it's been put there deliberately. Huh? What do you think? Do you think there could be a leak in the roof? What? A leak? It's a ship. Is this ship quite safe? I'm sure that everything... I'm sure that even if there's a little leak in the roof, it doesn't mean the whole ship is gonna sink. No, no, you're right. Of course you're right. She's really trying to persuade herself, isn't she? Huh. What's in the tea? Poison? It would seem the teapot is empty. Hmm. So the natural conclusion is that Russians are very thirsty people. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? Or, because Ms. Pavlova only came in the cabin last night, she hadn't had the chance to make any tea yet. I mean, it could be either. It's definitely that, uh, it's definitely that they're exclusively thirsty. Wait, a thousand, wait, what? It's definitely that they're exclusively thirsty. It's definitely that they're, they're exclusively thirsty, okay. I lay a thousand and one on it. You're rather abstained, aren't you? Not a hoodah. All right. Oh, what's this? A little trash bag? I suppose every cabin has a waste paper basket. Shall we have a little look inside? Not a hoodah, son. It's poor etiquette to go sifting through someone's rubbish, you know, especially a lady's. Those eyes. She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. Well, into the bin that I go. However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly. We have no choice. I'm really excited about this. Please, please, please. Snake skin. There's hardly anything in there at all. Well, she only did get here last night. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. There's just a few books on the desk, nothing else, by the looks of it. Well, Miss Pavlova only ran away from the ballet last night. She hardly occupied this cabinet for her time at all. That's true. I wonder what kind of books she likes to read. Murder books? Hmm, let me see. Yes, yes, I see. It would seem that Miss Pavlova enjoys reading. Oh my god, you went through those pages like it was nothing. Books written in Russian. Should have figured it out, you know? Thanks, I think I probably already knew that. 
It's rude to ask too much of people, Narahoda-san. Kindly remember that. Yes, Mom. Alright. I guess we can look at this again, why not? Ah, uh, yes, they're displayed in the cabin, too. Looks. The rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are strictly forbidden, blah blah blah. I suppose Miss Pavlova realized that she needed to keep the content of her case a secret after she read this. Her special friend, I mean. I wonder where her friend had disappeared to now. Probably having fun exploring the ship, I imagine. Or choking someone else out. I just hope I just hope Seaman Stroganov doesn't find it and throw it overboard. I hope he does. Oh yes, so do I. Hmm. Well, we have the bell in her room. I think I'll check that for last, just in case someone starts ringing it. Hmm. It's kind of strange for someone who's a who's trying to keep trying to lay low to not have their door locked. Kevin Dora has the same simple sort of bolted latch. If the bolt draws across, there's no way anyone could enter the cabin from the outside. Yes, it's not a particularly heavy-duty bolt, is it? But still, it would slide across on its own accord, would it? No. And the door is made of metal, so there's no chance of trickery using magnets. Wait, what? No chance of trickery using magnets to unbolt it. Yeah, but you can just use magnets to slide it over. <laughs> if the magnet's strong enough, and it seals up perfectly, too, to stop any seaware. Any, any seaware? My bad. Any seawater coming in. So you used. So you couldn't use the method you told me of passing a thread through the crack around the closed door. Hmm. Seems to know a lot about tricks of opening doors. I'm starting to see why they suspect me. It's one of those things next to the bed in Cosmos Cabin, too. Yes, it's a bell cord. I can't resist. What if we get caught, you dummy? She barely hesitated there, and she gave it a good tug, too. No, I didn't actually expect anyone to come. We don't want them to. We're trying to investigate in secret. Oh, come on, girl. Maybe this could have also been considered the speckled ban, right? It is speckled. Well, kind of speckled. It has a pattern on it, and it is ban-like. It would make sense for a whistling sound to kind of come from it too, I guess, maybe. Huh. Depending on certain circumstances. My dog is just rolling around next to me. Alright. Let's see, what else do we need to look at in here? Let's see. Check that, that. Water bowl. I want to check the rack, but that seems fine. I think that might have been everything in here. You know, I would like to check the bag, but I guess that's out of question. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Hmm. Mikodaba, I think we found everything that we need to. I don't. I don't see much here. I'm trying to see if there's like any sign of some sort of nail polish or something like that, shoe polish or whatever, but doesn't seem to be. I think we're done investigating, honestly. <sighs> but that can't be. We've added no fucking... no evidence whatsoever. Whatever the hell that thing is, it has to be like a bell from an animal collar or something. I don't even know. It would make sense. Can we check inside this thing? Let me see. No. Nothing. I'm trying to see if there's like any, any inkling, any like tiny bit I can find. But I don't... I don't think so. Can't really check... Check the bed. <laughs> that one counts for the wardrobe for some reason. Kind of weird that we actually don't look inside the wardrobe because there's clothes in there now. It was pretty empty before.
What is that fucking noise? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was so confused. I heard like a slight whistling noise and I'm like, is that the game? No, it's my own background. It's something in my house going off. All right. Huh. Yeah, I, I think that's it for this room. I, we've seen all we can. Done anything in here changed. Back to the passageway. Maybe have a closer look around here. What the hell are you doing? Oh, Mr. Slums, look. Wow, you never know where where he's gonna turn up next, do you? It seems he's been stealing a look at something. He has he, Sorry, I had to look at the time. It seems he's been stealing a look at something as he sings to himself. Alright, Shlomes, what the hell did you find? tra la 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 Ooh, you touched my tra-la-la. <laughs> I did it the great detective way. He's still singing. Do you think he hasn't noticed us? Or he's simply, simply in extremely high spirits? Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew. When the yard bit off more than it could chew. And through it all, when there was the doubt, it's Lucky Herlock. <laughs> it's Lucky Herlock was about. Excuse me? I solved it all and I stood tall. I did it the great detective way. <laughs> Mr. Sloans! Oh shit. What is it? You wanna fight? Did he just fucking. <laughs> he just swing at me? Honestly, interrupting a fellow when he's singing, and I was just about to reach the climactic finish. Sorry. I thought you were never gonna stop, so I figured now is a good time as any. I very nearly dropped you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks. Alright, I get the picture. Now could you put those fists away? Mr. Slums. You seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Ah, uh, yes, that. I was in. I was in. Oh God, I can't read. It. I was in. Hey, God damn it! Immen, immen, immer, immeasure. Fuck. Words. Immersed. For some reason, I can't. I was immersed in the study of the ship's log, as pinned by the stocky built crewmen who usually is on guard here. Oh yes, the ship's log. And did you find out anything useful from it? Well, after 2 a.m. this morning, the majority of the entries are blank, so he wasn't here. Which means that there's nothing to report, nothing of a note happened. You truly are a student from Land of Rising Sun. You've been utterly blinded by it. Sorry. Your logic, my boy, is inverted. What do you mean, Mr. Shlomes? Observe the other pages and all shall become clear. It would seem the same crewman of standing security. Oft, my bad, oaf. Crewman of stand uh, fuck, can't read. Standing sentry in this first class passageway. And he has an almost religious practice for recording nothing to report every half an hour. Oh, he writes that in every, he writes that every 30 minutes. Nothing to report. Precisely. Put simply, the seaman writes nothing to report when there is just that. And yet, the ship's log from last night is largely blank. He didn't even write nothing to report. Do you mean... Yes. There were circumstances afoot last night, which led to the seaman being absent from his post. What kind of circumstances? What happened? That remains a mystery for now. But we can be sure something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribbling nothing to report in the log. These are important details. I would stake my life on it. You must log the ship's wait what? You must log the ship's log in your in your mental file. Ugh, can't read. Alright. 
So around time of death, or speculated time of death, he wasn't on post. Now that deduction was worthy of a great detective. Ah, you're starting to understand what my way is. I see. We'll make Sherlock's... Sherlock. We'll make Shlom Shlom's brilliance. Oh, ouch. What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, don't worry yourself. It seems to be afflicted by a throbbing head this morning. Yep, something was in the food. But Mikotoba doesn't feel it, though. Well, my friends, until our next encounter. He's still singing to himself. I can hear it as he wanders off down the passageway. Mikotoba, did you eat anything last night? Something wrong, Sasato san? You seem lost in thought. It's just. Well, I feel the same. You did fucking eat last night. Sorry? Ever since I woke up this morning, I had something of a headache. A sort of continuous throbbing. Oh, you too. Alright. Well, that's all we have here, really. I guess back to our cabin we go. Anything new? No. Then back to the other cabin we go. <laughs> oh, that's not good. What's that? Someone pulled an alarm. Shut down the engines immediately. Vessel sighted at a quarter mile four. Full stop. Heart starboard. All hands brace for impact. Oh, we're gonna crash into another fucking ship. I think we're about to crash into another ship. What? Oh, the ship's tilted. I can't stand. Cesaro son, hold me. We should really leave from the bottom deck. Sada-san, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I think I'm fine. Thank you, Narahodo. It looks like we avoided a collision. I think. Yes. The ship has come to a stop. Oh my goodness, what about you, Narahodo-san? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Oh, fuck. The door locked. Hello? Is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance. Oh, that sounds like... Inspector Hosonaka. If you're in there, Narahodo-san, unbolt the door, quickly. What? The bolt. It all makes sense now. Huh. Well, it somewhat makes sense. We must have had a same situation last night. But wouldn't the alarm wake people up, though? It would make sense how the door got locked. The boat tilts over. It also makes sense why everyone would have a headache. You know, they must have hit their head on the wall while the boat, while the boat was tilting. But if that's the case, then that means the alarm wouldn't have gone off. Which means that was probably how, that is probably connected to how um, Pavlova got on board. I would think that would be the only reason not to set the alarm off. If you needed to stop the ship. Was she just, no way she was just adrift at sea. And they found her? That wouldn't make any sense, though. I don't know. Most curious indeed, though. Look at that. The door's bolted. Did you do that, Sasato-san? No, I didn't touch it. Well, that's strange. How did... And... Look at all the books. They're just like they were before again. Hmm. 
So maybe, maybe he didn't get choked out by a snake, right? Maybe he just fell the wrong way and twisted his neck. An unfortunate, unfortunate turn of events, I guess. There is no murderer, maybe. Now, hold son. Are you not going to open the door and let the inspector in? I'm handcuffed. Why do I have to do it? I better tidy this place up first. Our violent emergency stop has solved one mystery, at least, in a very vivid way. But I knew that what waited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I hurried around, tidying up the cabin with a new scene, with a new scene of foreboding in my heart. Oh shit, I can't leave at a cliffhanger. I need to end the stream. We've been going on for a bit. Oh damn it, but we can't end we can't end on that. I gotta see what's in there. Cause if we end then I might not be able to play this game until a week from now. And I wanna know, damn it. What's in there? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Did someone die? Somehow, the door to the cabin we were and ended up bolted after we made an emergency stop. Sato-san took a deep breath, then gently slid back the bolt. You! What are you doing in Ms. Pavlova's quarters? Ah, oh, you both look unhurt. Good. Yes, we're fine. Thank you. What on earth happened? You heard something about how we were gonna collide with another ship? Yes. It appears to have been a false report, though. How? Oh, how did that happen? There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought the ship would, uh, must have saw- God damn it. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. This person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything's chaos. Passengers are screaming. Crew are running around. This first-class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh, I see. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean that someone pressed that button outside? You! You wicked intruder! Dressed in all black! You are a devil! Listen, I did what I had to, okay? And you, where's your damn pet? Sorry? Me? I've been called a lot of things before, but Devil is the first. You opened my traveling case. How could you? I didn't do that. What? No, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Pavlova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector. Hmm, yes. Arrest this man. I know he did it. I'm already in handcuffs. What are you gonna do? He is a criminal. It's not enough that he's killed a man. Duh, and he's a stowaway as well. If Vexen promises not to steal chicken, do you believe it? Yes. Uh. Take him away. He's a trespasser as well as everything else. And what are you? Stowaway, trespassing, killing. She's right, you are a devil. It doesn't look good, does it? There's a cell below deck. Throw him in. Tomorrow we dock in Hong Kong. Then we give you straight to the police. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Honosuka. Please, Inspector Hosonaga. Is there nothing you can do? This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. After my last efforts to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. This is terrible. This is a real crisis. I gotta find a, a solution. Immediately. All right. Examine, 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 examine. Something, something, something in here. What the fuck are you doing and how did you get in here? What the? 
What are you doing up there? Why are you wearing her tiara? Mr. Shlomes. Naturally, I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles felt like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective it is my business to know what other people do not? This isn't mere tomfoolery, my boy. Oh, no, no, no. Well, why are you hanging from the hook before then? Isn't it obvious? They probably assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles, naturally. I wish to determine it if it would bend the conce what? The conceited looking hook on the wall, so full of so full of brag and bounce. I never know whether to take this man seriously or not. Ah, you again, the great detective. Ah, Inspector. I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you, most urgently. Well, you might try looking for some you might try looking for me somewhere other than a hook on the wall next time. What is the report? Speak. An urgent report from the great detective can mean but one thing. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night here on this vessel, the steamship Bira, has been solved by me, naturally. What? Really? Yes, I have eliminated all other possibilities. No other explanations exist. So, allow me to illuminate all your minds. For I am about to reveal my great detective's greatly... Wait, what? My great detect... Hmm. Great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Oh, no, we're going through this again, aren't we? Ha. Huh. You have solved it. Even Hedgehog understands this case. Hedgehog? We all knew who was responsible for killing student boy this morning when we found criminal in the wardrobe. It is the stowaway, and he has handcuffs to prove it. I didn't do it, damn it. The trouble is, there doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because, as everyone knows, the cabin door was bolted shut from the inside. That means the culprit must be someone who was inside the cabin. Yes, it was called a locked room mystery in detective stories. Duh, locked room, that is point. The room was locked? Well, I can't deny that. There's no way the bolt could have been drawn across from outside the cabin. You were all quite mistaken. The cabin next door is not a so-called locked room at all. What? Oh yes, there is another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? What new discovered one? Why? It gapes open... Wow. It gapes open mouth at you even as we speak. The ventilator, man. The ventilator? Thank you. I am free of suspicion. Go fuck yourselves. You think this is funny? I cannot even put my arm through that hole because you're a fucking giant. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks with, like, 25 different C's. You're suggesting that the culprit entered and left the victim cabin through the tiny opening? It's not possible. But what if they were a snake? <laughs> but it is. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. Oh, you got a snake, don't you? Fess up. Mr. Sloans, do you mean... You're referring to the words Cosmo wrote in his diary. 123, I can hear a faint whistling sound. 135, what looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Precisely, my dear madam. But what does this mean? What is this speckled band? The answer to the particular conundrum is in this very cabin. Mr. Slums, what are you doing? There's a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I am ready. 
What am I about to expose? What I'm about to expose to you, uh, for you all to see, will shock you to your cores. It's a snake. Behold. What the? Fucking called it. Yeah. Allow me to introduce you all to the band. The speckled band. A snake. Indubitably. I fucking called it. I've been saying it. She's part of House Slytherin. Uh, Mr. Shlomes, just one thing. Pray what troubles you. Well, that snake isn't really speckled, is it? Fuck off, Rinosuke. It looks more stripey, wouldn't you say? Right, it is not speckled. You're right about that. It's not speckled. Fucking bullshit. Yes, you're right. I think in this case, you have to call it... The Striped Ban, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh. You both see and observe with distinction, however. Do you not think that is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes for you to fall? Oh my goodness, really? It is a trap. How exactly? I think perhaps it is time I explain the intricacies of my train of thought. Are you ready, Miss Pavlova? I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that is all. This death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Your snake broke my friend's neck. <laughs> there are two conclusions I have drawn from the facts. Number one. Last night, your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Ah. Uh, and number two. The same friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. No. Alright. Hey. Listen. When we didn't have it in front of us, it was a good theory, right? I felt it. You know, I felt it in my bones. But now that they're giving it to us, it's like, alright, that's obviously not what happened. So my whole entire course of thinking has been shattered. So now instead of the snake killed him, I'm gonna go with the snake distracted him. He went to check it out. The shit moved and he fell off from a chair or something and broke his neck in the fall. And maybe fearing for her and, you know, fearing that it's her snake's fault, she went in there, checked on the guy and went, oh shit. <laughs> She turned as white as a bowl of rice again. Come on, man. She's just like that. <laughs> She's Russian. They're very fair-skinned. Shalom's must be right. He hit the nail on the head. This young woman's friend killed Mr. Asogi? He's squeezing your head right now. It looks like she can't speak with the snake coiled around his head. I would advise a little mo... Uh, a little movement, as, as little movement as possible, Seaman. You wouldn't want to fa you wouldn't want the fangs of the long friend in your neck. So everyone, let us begin. Let us not begin, please. <laughs> How much time do I have? Let's see. Okay, maybe I have enough time to go through this. Maybe. Harlock Shums is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. All right, the great deduction. The game is afoot. Or should I say, a snake. Intruder's identity. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. His death is not has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. Smarts with pains. What? 
and it is the very pain that that evidence your inch inch god damn it inch durr, can't read uh, an, ex, an exact an exact of fucking words man and an ex an ex trickable oh i can't read fuck that word uh, so that's that exact evidence that links you to the victim's death so we ask what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on the po on the portinus Port portinus portinus night what the fuck well naturally it was the friend with which you boarded this vessel was it not as i suspected another telltale glance without doubt your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. And yet, the fact leaves us to... to... God damn it, I, these words. <laughs> leaves us in a quandary. Oh. It doesn't have fangs. Doesn't seem like it. The victim written observation... Uh, God damn it. The victim's written observations on the night of the question tale of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably, the specimen markings do not fit the descriptions in any way. What explanation can we then give Prey? Wait, what? <laughs> can we then give Prey? Uh, what was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes? No, don't look at me. It has nothing to do with... <laughs> this has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Oh my god, yes. What you're trying to... <laughs> what you are trying, but failing to conceal, can only be the snake's... The snake's sloth skin? What? You mean to shed its skin? Yeah. Evidently, after the subtle and horrible crime, this most deadly friend of yours... Shed its original skin. No. See, that's what I was hoping was in the case, was shed its skin. At least, you know, if the snake wasn't in there, at least you find something in there. Fur, skin shed, scales. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Last night, through the ventilator visible in this cabin, your thin speckled friend slithered next door. Using the bell cord on the other side of the bridge, bridge? On the other side as a bridge, the serpent slightly descended into the victim's quarters. In dim light, it appeared to the young man who was about to lose his life as a speckled man. In summary, the nature of this friend of yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a rare breed of snake, whose markings change each time it slo sloths? Sloths? Each time it sheds its skin. A snake so dreadful, we can only imagine it would be found in the deepest depths of India. That was just the first topic. Jesus fuck. What's the second one? How Mr. Asogi died. Use less big words for commoners like me, please. Moving on. We come to the heart of the matter, the grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life, and why? According to the data in which I have been apprised, it would appear there was no visual signs of injury. Ah. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom. Uh, it has no fangs. Now if we talk the facts... Now we take that as facts. We can we can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm that to affirm god damn it I can't read to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Oh no, could it be there? Yes. An examination of the deceased body will prove the cause of death. The almost but not quite in imper, imperceptible. Puncture wounds left by venomous fangs will seal the truth. Yes, the visage of the snake bite delivered by your terrifying friend. This 
This mark. This. Wait, what? <laughs> this. This makes no sense. I'm losing my mind here. I've been reading this for like fucking four hours. So bear with me. <laughs> There's no point for feigning in. Eh. There's no point feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. After the incident, you've ende endeavored to hide everything, didn't you? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right. You hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in the traveling case. When we first met in this cabin, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Your servant's assassins was relentless inside, no doubt. You... you don't. It is telling that the victim made note of the low whistling sound that's heard a minute before its end. That was your signal, was it not? The sound you had to train your servant, train your servant friend. To train? Indeed, you put the servants through the ventilator and wait. After a period, you summoned it back with a whistle. You summoned it back after it, after it killed him? He wrote it in his book after it killed him? You couldn't know if the animal had done its duty, so you would listen for signs of life next door. If the victim appeared not to have been dispatched, you released the snake once more. Do you deny the snake has undergo such training? It's not true! Having slithered through the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs in once. And its venom would course through the victim's veins, ending its life forever. That is the true nature of the speckled band that took the poor young man's life. There can be no doubt, my logic is infallible. That took longer than I thought it would, honestly. Thus concludes Herlock Shalom's great deduction of the speckled band. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> this guy. So much wrong. So much wrong. Miss Pavlova has trained her pet snake as a killing machine. There on the floor, you will observe a saucer of milk. The promise of food to the is the key to training any creature. No, it's not. <laughs> Incredible. You saw the mystery. Amazing. Your great deduction really lives up to its name. I see now why Herlock Schlums has become such a household name. My dear man, it was nothing remarkable. As the Russians say, I could have done it with one left hand. Um... Could I venture an opinion, Mr. Sloans? But of course, what's on your mind? It's just about your deductions before. Something don't quite make sense to me. I welcome questions as to my method, and I will answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, good. First of all, Snakes are egg-laying creatures, part of the reptile family. You are well informed, madam. And reptiles, uh, don't drink milk. It's really only mammals that like to drink milk, you see. So, I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. No matter. No doubt Miss Pavlova used some other treat to encourage her pet to do her bidding. Milk was merely an example. The logic still holds. Well, there's something else. Snakes have no ears. Uh? Yes. So, I'm not sure if it would... Snakes have no ears. Then how do snake charmers do the whistle thing? How do they do the little... the flute thing? Like, I know they don't have any, like, physical ears, but they got, like, holes on the side, right? <laughs> Something like that. Yes. I'm not so sure it would really be possible to signal a snake by whistling. But, madam, what are the tales of Arabia? You have not heard the snakes that dance to the sounds of a flute. 
Yeah, honestly, yeah, me, myself, I'm actually very misinformed about this. What's going on? I think perhaps the performance played their music in time with the snake's natural movements. So what, the reverberations or something? Oh, I see. No hands, no feet, no ears. These creatures are so imp impotent as to be practically useless. Don't take it out on snakes, Mr. Schlumps. Um, there is one other thing. You have more? Snakes use the scales on their bellies to propel themselves. So, I'm not really sure the snake couldn't manage to climb up a flat bell cord. Well, it coil- snakes can totally coil around shit like that and climb up. And manage to climb up a flat bell cord like the one in these cabins. Then, it should try harder. And I mean, it doesn't need to get up through the cord, it can just get up through the wardrobe. Please don't be angry with me, Mr. Sloans. The point is, even if the snakes has gone through the ventilator to the next door cabin, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say... ...is that there is... there's a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake could have had a part in this. <sighs> Listen, it was a good theory until they brought the snake aboard, okay? <laughs> That's back to the question, where the hell did the milk come from, though? I think... We need to step in and help again, Mr. Narahoto. Oh no, you don't mean... Yes. We need to modify Mr. Sh uh, Mr. Slum's latest deductions and turn them into the great ones they ought to be. I had a feeling that was coming. Alright, let's give it a try. Alright. Just what I was waiting for, Mr. Narahoto. Yes, right. So, cast your eyes down to your wrist again. What? I hate you. You did it again. Your handcuffs are gone. Where'd they go? Fear not. I shall see they're restored after our work is done. I really wish we'd leave them off. Now, everyone, let us begin. Herlock Shlums is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. Hold it, Shlomes. Alright. Well, because I'm pressed for time right now, I'm definitely not going to read everything over again. Because <laughs> I'll lose my mind. So, we're just going to get to the parts, right? Okay, let's see. Yeah, you cannot deceive yourself. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. When you recall those horrid events, aching heart smarts with pain. Your aching heart. More like her wrist. Huh. She does have pain expression on her face. Yes, that's true. She looks as though Cosmo's death is weighing heavily on her mind. But you're not sure Mr. Slums has read it quite... Oh, God. Has read her quite correctly, is it? Could there be some other interpretation? Let's take a moment. And really look very closely at her. Alright. Let's see. What else is causing her pain? You have burns on your hands? What's going on there? It's a different color going on? Oh! Claw scratches. Look. Looks like a very painful wound. It looks like a scratch made by some kind of small animal. <sighs> so the snake isn't hers. It belongs to someone else. She has a cat. Those are some cat scratches, and the milk would make sense. Well, her scratches... Her doesn't appear to be around here. Alright, well, it's those. Yes! Yes. When you recall those words of Vince, the claw scratches smarts with pain. Smarts. <laughs> Indeed. Simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss Pavlova did in fact receive the scratch. Sometime, uh, sometime last night. Did the snake eat your friend? <laughs> when I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. And when I'm sad, 
The pain from my wound is worse. Ah, and that very pain is the evidence. Blah blah blah. So as we ask, nature of the interest. Okay, cool. Well, naturally, it was the friend which bored best. Would you not? No. Another telltale glance. Without a doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent. It's definitely not. Seems like the scratch marks on the back of Miss Pav Pavola's hands was made by the friend of hers, doesn't it? Except, snakes don't have claws. Nope, they do not. They don't even have hands or feet. Well, if the snake isn't her pet, what is? True identity of her friend? You should follow her gaze. Yeah, 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 I know. Where's the cat? <laughs> Where's the cat? Oh, it's in the picture with her. Cool. Oh, and there's its collar. So it most certainly was in that room. Look at the photograph in the frame. Must be something Ms. Pavlova brought with her and sh uh, when she ran away. Ah, she's exceptionally beautiful, isn't she? Yes, that's true. But personally, it's the little black creature she's holding that caught my eye. Maybe we better take a closer look at this. It's a cat. Looks like a kitten Miss Pav uh, Miss Pavola is cuddling here. Oh, what a cute little kitten. It could be It could vey? Vi? It could vie. It could vie with you it can vie with you, couldn't it? Not Hora son. For the blackest outfit. Hmm. Black kitten. And from the looks of this picture at least, Miss Pavola seems very attached to it. Alright. Little yes. kitty cat. I wish it was a dog, but okay. Without a doubt, your friend is the little kitten we see before us. Yes, the scratches on the back of your hand makes makes that abundantly clear. Oh no. The whereabouts of the black kitten isn't clear, but what is clear is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? Darka is my best friend. I couldn't leave her behind. Darka would appear to be a Russian blue. And yet, the fact leaves us in a quandary. Okay, victim's run observation, blah blah blah, speckle ban. The specimen markings do not fit the descriptions in any way. Explanation we give and pray. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. It's definitely not a snake skin then. Then what is it? Cat's toy? It's definitely not skin. Did you see that? She just took something out of her pocket and hid it behind her back. If she just left it in her pocket, no one would have ever known. Oh, yes. Floyds like that are Mr. Slump's specialty. Uh-huh. I thought the deduction was his specialty. Or maybe making me believe that was a ploy, too. Whatever. Let's move on. Let me check it out. In which case, just what is she hiding behind her back? What do we got here? Oh, yeah, it's a toy. <laughs> it's a cat toy. Well, it's speckled, and it's a band, but what is it? It seems to be soft and fluffy. A long piece of cloth of some sort. It looks like the handle, uh, it looks like it's handle on one end. It's a cat toy. Alright. Cats like to chase the band around and paw at it. Kittens in particular love this sort of play. Alright. I'm running out of time, so we gotta move fast. Alright, cool. Oh, I gotta present it. Yes! There we go. Cat's toy! Yes, the thing you are trying but failing to conceal is a cat's toy. Precisely. And the true nature of how infamous speckle uh, true nature of the infamous speckled band. 
All right. And it was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. You weaved it around, and presumed naturally the victim. Okay, so I guess her cat got out, climbed up the bell string, went in, and in order to get her cat back without, you know, making a fuss, she put the toy down and wheeled it around. And I would assume that Cosmo seeing this would probably help her out, right? It would make sense. Cosmo seeing it would pick up the kitten, put it through the vent so she can get it back, and then the ship, the ship might have moved, and then maybe he fell and broke his neck. Truly troublesome feline young Darko is proving to be. She must be caged at once. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet. Oh, sadness. Alright, what about the other one? It was after I gave her food last night. That when it happened, that's when it happened. She climbed up. She scratched up the back of my hand and then ran up the, ran up the bell cord. Before I can do anything, she had disappeared through the ventilator. Darka. She's so naughty. Beloved kitten. Aww. Alright. <coughs> After this, I'm gonna have to end the stream. Jesus. Moving on. Oh, I wish I could go faster. How does young man lose his life? According to the data in which I have been appraised, it would appear that I have no visible signs of injury. Yes. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death by terrible venom. Which I'm just saying is true. There were no signs of wounds anywhere. That's right. But Shalom seems unaware of the very important detail. Cosmo wasn't poisoned either. Yes, it would seem so. Let's give him information he's missing now. Yes! In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death the, uh, can only be explained by the post-mortem report. Ah, yes. I knew it was one or the other. His neck was... Fuck it, snap the twain, baby. Indeed. The breaking of the clavicle, uh, clavicle, god, uh, cerv cervical vertebrae, it's fatal. Siemens Stroganov isn't some, in <laughs> some immortal freak, you know. The jury is out. Anyways, we have one good authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, we take this as fact. Reason to imagine, uh, remains any evidence. Oh no. Could there be? Yes, examination of the deceased body will prove the cause of death. Husband died because his neck was broken. In other words, he was probably struck with something. Or some, Or, you know, struck by something or someone. Eh, just impossible yet, no weapon could be found. Presumably, Darka didn't silently creep behind Cosma to deal the final blow. I suppose. It's possible that he had fell and hit him, hit the ground awkwardly. That's what I'm saying. It could have been a terrible act of misfortune that broke his neck completely by accident. Oh yes, a bad fall could explain it. It's rather hard to believe Cosmo though. He wasn't a clumsy man. Hmm. Well, we need to fix the deduction somehow. Is there anything from the scene that could explain what had happened? Yes, probably picked up the cat and in doing so, put him in a position where falling would have been bad. Scuffing his shoe up, too. Yes! Yes. An examination of the mark on the floor will prove the cause of death conclusively. This particular mark is prominently visible next to the victim's body. It's a... <clears throat> it is deposit of shoe polish. Shoe polish? Indeed. Positively identifying by a little analysis. Oh, God damn it! Positively identified by a little analysis. Uh, God, I can't read. Damn it! 
device, <laughs> device I constructed, which I carry now as a matter of course. Beeswax, tallow, and dye were my results. The underling ingredients of shoe polish. Underline, underling, fuck. And the color of the polish is perfect match to the color of Mr. Shogi's lace leather shoe. Looking at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happened. For some reason, Mr. Sogi must have caught his foot at the point of the floor and tripped. Please, no. And by the dreadful turn of misfortune, caught his neck against some immovable object as he fell on the floor. Maybe the table? Oh, suffering a fatal blow to his spine and the victim's vertebrae. I guess, I guess the reason the table and the sword and everything would be fucked up on the ground can either be due to the shit moving, or, uh, you know, maybe the cat might have been jumping around. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Is that really true, Ms. Pavlova? Yes. So what about the evidence left at the scene where Mr. So where Mr. Sogi left his life? Left his life? Lost his life? <laughs> yes, the facts are clear as day to me. You did all you could to conceal the incriminating evidence. But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. Ah, it's not that. That's right, you hid the evidence in the traveling case. I don't believe it. Cosmo someone merely tripped over in. And now he's no more? It can't be true, I refuse to accept it. I know it's hard to believe, but the mark on the floor does seem to suggest that's what happened. But, if the part of Mr. Slum's deduction is right, Ms. Pavlova is trying to hide some evidence that would prove it. Here in the cabin, somewhere in the, direct, in the direction that she just cast her eyes. I wonder, let's have a good look around. So, my first theory, proved to be super wrong right well actually my first theory was wrong because I said he might have gotten hit in the back of the head right that's out of you know out of question the second theory was a snake the moment they put that snake in the room they said here look at the snake I was like okay can't be that easy my third theory is he fell and hit his head I fell and you know broke his neck so I wonder Waste bucket? But there's nothing in there. What are you talking about? I guess we can look at it. Hmm. This is a waste paper bucket. Perhaps all the first class cabins have them. But Miss Pavlova only started occupying this cabin late last night. Presumably, there's not much rubbish in there yet. Oh, the other half of the bell. Oh, what's that? It's a broken piece of glass, isn't it? Yep. It feels like I've seen it somewhere before. It does look familiar. Perhaps it's more than uh, it's more than your mind simply playing tricks on you. Yes. So did we solve this without having to go to trial? <laughs> That's right. You hit the evidence that links you to the victim's death in the waste paper bucket. There's been a fragment of some interlaced glass object. Interlace? Intri intricate. My bad. Of some in intricate glass object, it would seem. One with a familiar air to it. Precisely, we found another piece of broken glass on the floor in Mr. Sogi's cabin. And, as you can see, the two pieces fit together perfectly. Oh no. So, Ms. Pavlova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be the part of the glass objects... Wait, what? The part of this glass object which was evi evidently broken at the scene of the victim's death should be found in the waste paper bucket in your cabin. Bucket, bin, cabin? I don't know. You're well acquainted with this glass bell, are you not? I... I don't... I don't know. In the rush... In the... In the rush? Crush? Hushed? Hushed? In that hushed... Hushed? 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 Hushed, that's the word. What's wrong with me? In that hushed accent... Russian accent of yours. Won't save you this time. Hushed? I don't fucking... What? 
The word is hush. Why am I having such a hard time? What is wrong with me? I've been streaming for four hours. Four and a half hours, to be precise. Because we have conclusively, uh, conclusive evidence linking you to the bell in question. Take it away, Mr. Narahoda. Um, yes. The evidence linking her to the glass bell would be... Yes! The picture. If you look at this photograph, you can clearly see, hanging from darkest collar, the very glass bell in question. I... The truth has caught up with you, Miss Pavlova. The young man who lost his life last night did so after a truly in, inauspicious, inauspicious fall. I think that's the word. <laughs> In the case of, of that fatal stumble, in the case, the cause, case cause, whatever, cause, your absent feline friend, Darka. Ah, oh, shit. I couldn't. I couldn't tell anyone. I'm sorry. Aw. Death by tripping over a cat. <laughs> he tripped over the cat? Aww. At least Mia got killed. <laughs> Cosma died because he tripped. <laughs> what a fucking loser. Oh man, Cosma, why? Why don't you tell us now, Miss Pavlova? Tell us exactly what happened last night. Oh shit. It was a little after one in the morning. It was so late, but I had uh, I had no time to feed Darker, so I gave her some food. And then, all of a sudden, she scratched me and jumped out of my hands. People do say cats become very anxious and nervous in new environments. She was so fast, she disappeared through the ventilator before I could stop her. And that's how you are that's how you acquired the rather nasty wound on the back of your hand, I take it. Yes. And I had and I had read the rules on the wall. I knew that I was on a that it was not allowed god damn it. I knew I was not allowed darker with me. Can't read. Yes, modern science suggests that animals can carry infectious diseases. It's a precaution, really. So I listened and listened, trying to hear if there was some there was some noise in the next cabin. It was very quiet, I was sure if someone was there, he must be sleeping. So at that point he thought it safe to try and lure the kitten back. By dangling the end of the toy through the ventilator and into the adjoining cabin, Zarka always loved this toy, but it didn't work. Nothing worked. I tried using her favorite toy. I tried whistling to her softly, but nothing. She returned. She didn't return. So the faint whistling sound Cosmo wrote about in his diary was Miss Pavlova's trying to retrieve her pet. Cats have a pros. God, that fucking word again. Prospinity? Prospinity? I don't know. Pro Prospinity? Prospinity? I don't know. To remain hidden in shadows when frightened. Yes. So there was nothing else I could do. I just had to wait until she had calmed down. But then... Oh. That's so bad. I nearly passed out with shock. I heard her cry out and then... Oh, it was such a dreadful bang. Then afterwards, nothing. It was totally silent. Cosmo was... From the appearance of the brown mark on the floor. It seems like it seems like that's what you heard was the victim stepping on the glass bell tripping up. The SS Bureau is a large vessel, but even she can pinch and roll violently without warning. If Mr. Sogi was already off balance as a result of the ship lurching when the kitten got under his feet, a combination of unfortunate factors could easily have caused him to fall over. But, what became of the kitten afterwards? In 
In the end, I managed to get her to come back through the ventilator. The darker is nowhere to be seen. I must have forgotten to lock my case. And now she disappeared again. Ugh, gracious. That cat is as insuffer that cat is as insuffer insufferably? Oh, as insufferably restless as I am. Sorry. I'm having I'm having moments over here, okay? Well, he knows something about himself, at least. When I woke this morning, I heard that the young man in the cabin next to me had died. But I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone what had happened. I was too scared. Scared that they would send me back. Oh, hold on a minute. What about the snake? You're right. Where is it? If the snake isn't your friend, Miss Pavlova, then whose is it? And where'd it come from? What on earth is such a dangerous creature doing on board the ship? Oh, I didn't say? Snake is my friend. His name is... <laughs> God damn it. Pirozok? Pirozok? Fuck, I don't even know. What? What? The snake belongs to you? He escaped from cage when emergency alarm sound. I was looking for him. I did not expect to find him in here. Yes, how did the snake get in his cabin? Through sneak- ah, it went through the fucking alarm, didn't it? But... Animals are not permitted on board! <laughs> we are sea for- we are at sea for one year. You want to be so long without a close friend? Without someone you understand? Couldn't you find someone a little more human who understands you better? But my dear burly fellow... A gargantuan venomous snake? Surely you can appreciate the danger you're putting everyone in. No venom. Hmm? Yeah, he has no fangs. He does not have venom. He is harmless. Very long, but very gentle. He is adorable, like Granny. It's venomless? Yes. Now he is hungry, so he's in bad mood. But once I feed him, you'll see big smile. And you feed him what? Milk, I suppose? You feed him the mice on board, don't you? Huh, like they say the milk... Uh, what? Like they say they milk chickens? Ridiculous. Things that drink milk are only in, stu only in stupid stories. He eats mouses. Big, fat, round mouses. Oh, so? Is that why the mouse trap is in the passageway out there? Of course. How else can I catch my friend's favorite food? Nothing says top of the food chain like the look in the look in their eyes right now. So we're not going to trial over this, are we? It refuses to drink milk. It can't hear a whistle. It can't climb up bell cords, and it's not even venomous. How the deuce did something so intepid land land a starring role? And tepid. I think that's the word. I'm choosing that to be the word. It's my choice of words. It's not my fault. I don't make up stories. He's nothing. He has nothing to do with this incident. So that's what happened. That's the truth behind my best friend's tragic death. He broke his fucking neck. Because of a fall. Because he stepped on a cat. Miss Pavlova? I understand the difficult situation you found yourself in. And I do sympathize. But please remember this. A young man lost his life. If you're going to attempt to cover up your guilt with lies, then... Then no matter what the circumstances, I cannot forgive you. But... What are you talking about, Miss Mikotoba? What lies? Miss Pavlova's just confused- just confessed everything. Confused? What the hell's wrong with me? It was just a series of unfortunate events. An accident. I 
I'm not a great detective like Mr. Sloan's. I don't have a gift for knowing the truth. But even I can see that was not the truth. Don't you agree, Mr. Narahoda? Hmm. So what, you're not gonna tell me that she killed him just to keep the secret? Like, I understand where she's coming from, you know, the whole writing on the floor and everything, but... There's a discrepancy in Miss Pav uh, Pavola's story. <sighs> Jesus. I confess. I was, intent I was intending to let Scotland Yard deal with any outstanding issues on this matter. Oh? I'm only present here for a very specific reason. The truth is, you, Mr. Narahodo, are simply a distraction. A distraction? I do hope you haven't been finding your shackles too uncomfortable. <sighs> Not again. When did he do that? Especially as they're on your wrist as a result of my intervention. I was rather hoping I could resolve matters before we made our next port call. You were, Mr. Shams? Yes, but I overlooked one important detail. The deceased young man was a very close companion of yours. Was he not? Yes. Cosmo was my closest friend. I owe him, I owe him my freedom, even. In that case, we must follow this to its conclusion. No further distractions. You must uncover the real truth here, Mr. Narahodo. Yes, whatever that may be. The key to this is in the discrepancy in her stories. If I can chase that down, maybe the truth will come to clear. The truth about how you really died. About how the scene in your cabin really came to be. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Narahodo. So then, shall we begin? Yes. What should we ponder first? Is the victim who lost his life in the cabin uh, that was bolted shut from the inside? Was this truly an unfortunate incident? Or was it the fact no incident at all? But well, we've already established, haven't we? The man tripped over the kitten that climbed into his cabin via the ventilator. Tragic, yes, but it's still an incident. Hold it! Incident, accident, I'm sorry, I, I changed the two. Wait. Let's just take a step back. It doesn't make sense if it really if that's really what happened, does it? I'm gonna have to ask you to spell it out for me, I'm afraid. Yes, it's starting to take shape now. There's a clear contradiction between the facts and Ms. Pavlov's story here. The evidence is right there in Cosmo's cabin, undeniably. His death couldn't possibly have been a mere accident. Really? Let us show our hand, Mr. Narahodo. Time to present the evidence. The evidence that proves unequivocally that the victim's death was no mere incident. Yes! The truth is clearly recorded in this photograph print. There's no way that Mr. Sogi could have left his message on the floor. That script, it's Russian, isn't it? Indeed it is. The word written means wardrobe. I see what you mean. Most people would have left a dying message in their native tongue, Japanese, in that case. But, but maybe he was studying Russian. It's a simple language. He could have picked it up very fast. That doesn't seem likely. That's actually not the point. It makes no difference whether he knew Russian or not. Sorry, what do you mean? Exactly what I said before. There's no way that Mr. Sogi could have left his message on the floor. And the reason why is clearly explained here. 
damage to the cervic vertebrae resulting in instant death. Instant death. Which means, after the victim fell to the floor, he could have possibly have written anything. Because he was already dead. That's not the only reason either. There's something else we found in Mr. Sugi's cabin. A remnant of something that couldn't possibly have been there, if what Miss uh, Miss Palova told us was true. What? So, Sato-san has noticed it too, then. Putting the message on the floor aside, there's something else that's given the truth. Another piece of evidence that proves this was no accident. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I may not follow on this one. Another piece of evidence that proves this was no accident, in other words. Maybe? Yes! Point in trying to make uh, make with that evidence. Sorry to see how cosmic deaths really happen, I think. I think. Sorry to see nothing of the sort. Yeah, I'm sorry. If it was no accident, then what should we be looking for in this one? Either the absence of something, or what you expect to find at the scene of the crime. What? Either the absence of something you would expect to find at the scene of the, the scene of the incident, or the presence of something you wouldn't. Hmm. I'm actually at a loss here for a moment. Huh. Doesn't fit the confidence. Don't worry, Miss Naruhodo, I believe in you. Alright, so what are we looking for? Starting to tape shake now. There's a clear contradiction between the facts, Miss Pavlov's story here. The evidence is right there in Cosmo's cabin. It's undeniable. Putting this message on the floor aside, there's something else that gives the truth away. Provides it was no accident. Provides, my bad. Prove. Whatever. <laughs> Proves it was no accident. Uh, would it be his... Diary? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just fucking, uh... Damn it, how long have we been doing this for? Almost five hours, but... Absence of something. Can I... Yeah, review scene. Another piece of evidence that proves there was not. Oh, wait, are... You just talking about the language? Yes! Do I have to, like, select it? <laughs> Absence. Absence or something that should be there. I'm sorry, I'm I'm too focused on the message. I'm sorry. Are they talking about the fucking bell? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. They show you the scene up close of the writing and they're like, yeah, something's missing here. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? They're talking about the bell. I'm sorry, yeah. The other half of the bell. Piece of the broken glass next to the mark on the floor. But that <clears throat> But that's the glass bell the kitten had around its neck. Uh, already know about that. It was broken in half when the victim tripped. We already have a satisfactory explanation. Where's the flaw in that logic? Unfortunately, there's a very big flaw. A fatal flaw. What? If that's really what happened, then how did one half of the bell end up back in this cabin? Yes. Remember that we found the other half of the glass bell in that waste paper basket? Would you care to explain that, Miss Pavlova? 
Oh no. Both these pieces of evidence clearly pointed to the same conclusion. That's why Mr. Sogi died last night in his cabin. There was someone else in the room. And that same person deliberately arranged the scene to disguise the truth. In order to cover up her own guilt. Yes, there was someone else present in Mr. Sogi's room. You are wasting time. Someone else was there? Duh, of course. We know this. What are you talking about? Bulkhead was bolted shut from inside. There was no way out of room. Oh, yes. And only... And only other... Uh, the only other person in the cabin with the young student died was you. Yes. It's true. I was in the cabin when it happened. You were shut inside the cabin wardrobe, to be precise about the details. But I don't know Russian. There's no way I could have left that message. Not would have. There's no way you could have left the message, to be precise. Would you mind? Forgive me, my dear fellow. As I was saying... The person in question wrote this. I wrote the word wardrobe and rushed on the floor. And attempts to incriminate me for the crime even though I've been asleep in there the entire time. And then, the same person picked up the broken glass bell that had fell on the floor. For fear it might become evidence that that would show how Mr. Sogi really died. But why would his person why would this person have taken all the pieces of the bell away? Leaving half behind was already going to raise questions. Yes, well, uh. It was past one o'clock in the early hours of the morning. The cabin would have been quite dark. The single small dim, oh, God damn it, single small lamp suspended from the ceiling would barely have casted light onto the floor there. Little wonder then, the culprit failed to notice the fragment of the tiny item. You all suspect me, don't you? Seaman Stroganoff. Nina is woman of sea. She is daughter of strong sailor. Two years ago, they noticed her dancing skills and she went away to join ballet company. But before she was dancer on the ship, a member of ship's band. You don't have excuse ship angel. Wait, what? You don't have to accuse ship angel of being criminal. So that's it. You say that when young student died, Nina was there in the cabin. That's possible. That's impossible. I give my tooth. Hmm, well, this is most intriguing. And why would you give your tooth, Bray? How can you be so sure? Ah, great detective, you should know. Look, turn in, uh, look truth in eyes. Cabin bulkhead was bolted from inside. Nobody can get into cabin. Not Nina, not anyone. Or... You want to tell me the killer can walk through doors locked. Locked doors, my bad. I read that backwards. Yeah, it's impossible. He's right. But wait. I've read about this in detective stories. People often tie threads around door latches so they can open and close them from the outside. Red? Are you stupid? These bulkheads are not barn doors. Certainly not. These are watertight doors. As as one could expect to find in a modern steamship. God. Constructed of heavy steels with not a gap in sight. No threads or needles or magnets could have been, a magnet could have been used, okay? Oh, yeah, of course not. But Mr. Nanhoda, uh, Mr. Nanhoda suggested it earlier, so. Wow, really? How could you shift it onto me like that? <laughs> so Seaman Stroganoff has a valid point. The cabin door could have been bolted, uh, couldn't have been bolted shut from the outside. Not necessarily. What? I put it to you that I, uh, that I could bolt this cabin door without laying a finger on it. In this very cabin, we can see the, tra uh, we can see the traces of the method I have in mind, having been used before. I don't believe it. 
Well, Mr. Narahara? I believe you know what I mean, don't you? Way to shut the bolts of the cabin door from the outside. One way does spring to mind. Do you really know what Mr. Shlomes means? Yes. And so should you. Because we've seen it happen. Indeed we have. So, would you care to do the honors? Point out the telling signs. Okay. I'm gonna point to this. Yes! Look at the bookcase there. See how the books and things have been toppled over? It must have happened when the ship made its emergency stop before. Yes, that's right. It's a very powerful vessel after all. I am tired and hungry. <laughs> when the engines are thrown into reverse, a violent jolt go goes across the entire ship. Any small objects that aren't fastened down are bound to fall over. I believe... yes. It's what known as force of inertia, acting on an object. Ob object? Why did I say it like that? Object! Is there nothing... if there's nothing she doesn't know? Or is there anything that's not in that book? Well, whatever it's called, the same force that pushes over those books from the bookcase also made something else in this cabin move. The bolt on the cabin door. It was very obvious just after the emergency stop that the ship made earlier. We had come into this cabin not long before, and we had bolted the door. But then... We haven't bolted the door, my bad, I'm sorry. Fuck! Can we finish this already? Yes, the door was locked. We see this. We know this. Let's move on. Inspector. Oh, yes. That's it. Well, the ship stopped suddenly. The bolt flew across the locked door. Yes, it's made of metal. It's made of metal, but it's small and light enough to move by the ship's sudden change of speed. Or the force of inertia, if you want to call it that. What are you trying to say last night? After Mr. Sogi was killed? The SS Bureau made another emergency stop? When I woke up this morning and looked around the cabin, I thought it looked a little odd. All the books on the shelves had toppled over, and all the ornaments. It was almost as if someone had run their hand across the shelves and deliberately knocked everything over. Oh yes, I remember that. And I stood them all up again, didn't I? Then when we came into the cabin, we were surprised to see the same thing happen here. All the books and everything had toppled over, just like in Mr. Sogi's cabin. Oh my. Do you have anything to say about this, Miss Pavola? Are you out of your mind? You say Bureau made emergency stop? It does seem a little far-fetched. How could that possibly have happened? Unless you're saying that the culprit is actually someone from the engine room. Oh, it's simple enough. Hmm? Are you forgetting the button in the passageway outside? Used to trigger the emergency alarm? Oh yes, of course. There was a notice, wasn't there? Telling you only to press the button in times of emergency. On dark nights when the fog is dense, the captain cannot afford to rely on the eyes of, of his lookout alone. Hence the placement of number... It's placement of a number of buttons around the vessel to allow any crewman to rise the alarm. Rise? Raise the alarm, my bad. Fuck, what's wrong with me? Sleep deprived, that's what's happening. The sort of button? One is... Uh, what? The sort of button one is almost compelled to press to satisfy one's curiosity. Wait, it was you? When the button is pressed, two things happen in the interest of, safe, in the interest of safety. The emergency bell rings and the vessel comes to a complete stop. As indeed it did a little earlier today. Mr. Schlomes. Surely it wasn't you who... As I always say, a button has but one purpose in life. To be pressed. Whatever the occasion. 
sounds almost proud of himself. How dare you mess with the ship? I report you to the captain. You're in much trouble now. Now, now, I'm sure all that can wait until later. Let us not overlook the fact that we have now learnt a valuable lesson. When the vessel makes an emergency stop, the bolt on the cabin door slide close. So, uh, what we what we must now consider? Yes, it all comes down to one thing. Last night, after what happened to Mr. Sogi, did this ship make an emergency stop, or did it not? You're idiots. Pure is huge ship with many passengers. If we make emergency stop, even in the middle of the night, there would be chaos everywhere. What are your thoughts, Mr. Narahodo? Well, it's certainly possible that some kind of emergency happened last night. We have evidence to support that idea. Really? What evidence? Fascinating. Do show us, my good man. Evidence that promotes the theories an emergency gripped us last night. Yes! See you, Ms. Stroganoff. It's your duty to patrol the first class area of the ship, isn't that right? Duh, that's correct. Why? The ship's log here. This would be where you record the details of your duties. What are you doing with that? That's mine. Ah, you rather carelessly left it atop the little makeshift bureau in the passageway out there. But, as responsible passengers, we took it into our care with the mind to return it to you later. I left it there on purpose. That's where I put it anyways. The point is, looking at it, uh, looking at what you usually record, it's clear that under normal circumstances you write the phrase, no the phrase nothing happens every 30 minutes. But from 2 o'clock last night until first light in the morning, nothing was recorded at all. Nothing recorded in the log? That is... Duh. Because nothing happened. But if nothing happened, you would have normally wrote nothing to report, wouldn't you? Indeed so. Which tells us that shortly after 2 a.m., something happened. Here aboard the SS Bureau. Something significant, uh, sufficiently significant, to make you forget to fill in the ship's log. Are you suggesting that the ship really did make an emergency stop in the middle of the night? Stop talking rubbish. If I'm perfectly honest, I find that a little hard to believe myself. Oh, why? Well, because if something as major as an emergency stop really happened, surely all of us would have noticed. That's very true. Thanks to the emergency stop we experienced earlier, we all know what it feels like now. The ship lurched so violently, and the alarm bell was so loud. I can't imagine that anybody would sleep through that, even if it happened in the dead of night. Well, no. That's a good point. What of the throbbing? Sorry? <laughs> what do you mean? What about the throbbing? Your head, man. The throbbing of your head since this morning. We all have suffered with it. Oh, yes. I do have a headache, you're right. In fact, I haven't been feeling myself since I woke up today. Nor have I. My head has been feeling heavy ever since dawn. Yes, you've all been affected, haven't you? Just as I suspected. He's right. My head's been throbbing today, too. And since eating dinner yesterday evening, everything has felt sort of hazy. I can't really remember anything that happened after I climbed back inside the wardrobe. Then the first thing I noticed this morning was the throbbing pain in my head. I had already been dragged out of the wardrobe and had those handcuffs put on me by that point. Why didn't I wake up when all that happened to me? Tell me, Mr. Naruto. You boarded the vessel as a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, well, yeah. Sorry. 
The stowaway class of accommodation doesn't usually include meals. What did you survive on? Well, Cosmo looked after me. He was always happy to share his meals. So you enjoyed some of the whole roasted chicken dish that served yesterday evening, I take it? Yes, in fact. I had all of it. Cosmo wasn't fond of chicken. Oh, really? So the victim didn't eat any of the chicken at all? That's right. He didn't touch it. Is that relevant? My dear fellow, does that not strike you? Oh, Mr. Shlomes, do you mean to say that there was something wrong with the chicken? We were fucking drugged, I called it. I do. No, really. Is that really true? The meal prepared for the uh, the, 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 the meal prepared for the passengers last night had been tampered with. Tampered with by addition of sulfuric. Wait, what? So, so for, what the fuck? Designed to introduce to in, eh, to induce a very deep slumber in those who would consume it. A sleeping drug. Do you mean? Whoever did, the, whoever did this laced every meal with the sleeping drug so no one would notice the ship's emergency stop? Mr. Narahodo, of course that's not what Mr. Sloan means. What a far-fetched idea. Precisely. Lacing every meal of ship passengers on board with the sephiric drug would certainly be impossible. Unless, that is, every single member of the crew was a conspirator. What? Mr. Sloams, how dare you? Well, Seaman, eh? I'm sorry to say that any more, uh, uh, goddammit. I'm sorry to say that any more deception in this matter will get you nowhere. If you refuse to talk, there would have been an inquiry made through the ship, the shipping company, of course. And were that and were that to happen, every member of the crew and the captain himself would be hauled over the coals for aiding and abating a renegade. Abetting? Abating? Abating? I don't know. Please, no more. I'll tell everything. Huh? I cannot make problems like this everyone anymore. These crewmen are your former comrades, I believe. Yes. So when I decided to run away, I asked them to help me. We all agreed to help. Everyone together. She threw away everything. Her fame in the ballet. Mother Russia. We wanted to help our angel. I don't believe it. You're right. We put sleeping drugs in chicken last night. Yes, I remember now. I did notice chewing on a lump of something strange and bitter at a point. Duh. You cannot make all drug. How do you say? Dissolve? Ugh. Talk about heavy seasoning. At midnight in waters near Shanghai, we bought our angel on board. She was helped by comrades on shore with small fishing boats. Yes! Fucking carved it! Hmm! While all the passengers of the SS Bureau slept soundly. Thanks to the almost mag magical effects of slumber-induced potion their evening meals had contained. So, if that's what were happened, the only person awake on the ship last night were the crew, people who dislike chicken, and the newly boarded passenger, Ms. Pavlova. And that means it would have been possible for you. You could have used the emergency stop trick to lock Cosmo's cabin door. But how does this make sense? Surely every cabin door would have ended up locked in the case and there would have been complete chaos. Oh, I wouldn't say so. What? Of course. Just like us, all the other passengers would have eaten their evening, evening meals of chicken in their cabins. 
after which they would have been overwhelmed by tiredness because of the sleeping drug. Quite. And accordingly, all passengers were already in their cabins for the night. Yes. The overwhelming majority of passengers would habitually sleep with their cabin doors bolted anyways. And so, not one of them would have found it remarkable to find the door unlocked in the morning. In summary, in order to fasten the bolts of a single cabin door of the ship, the culprit bought the entire vessel to an emergency stop in the early hours of the morning. You have talked a long time and said many things. What is point? The point is what I said earlier. There was somebody else present on the scene when the victim lost his life that night. Someone who left a message in Russian on the floor and attempted to incriminate another. Someone who tried desperately to hide the broken fragments of glass that would reveal the culprit's identity. And someone who abused the ship's emergency stop procedure in order to lock a door. All told, a busy night. But... I don't know anything about any of this. I'm just a little girl. Oh, God. You like to speak with your long English words and explain your clever ideas. But I am Sailor, and Sailor don't listen to long, boring stories. We don't believe. Sailor like me, we trust only what we see with our eyes. Huh. A laudable trait. What? I'm quite of the same disp disposition, my good man. Observation to me is everything. Mr. Narahodo. Oh, yeah? Do you hear it? That, that accusator uh, accusatory cry of guilt on the wind? What accusatory cry of guilt? Sorry, you've lost me. Proof of involvement, man. But you can but you can't hear such a wow. But you can't hear such a call with your ears. No. You must hear it with your eyes. For observation is the bias of all deduction. What are you What are you talking about? I believe the time has come. For one final logic and reasoning spectacle. Okay, alright, okay, alright, alright, okay. Listen, this stream has been going on long enough. <laughs> oh my god, wow. This stream has been going on long enough. I cannot, I cannot go through another one of these. They are giving me the runaround to get to a conclusion that we pretty much already know. Uh, you know? So, with that said, I'm gonna have to end the stream here. I've been streaming for, what, five fucking hours? Almost five and a half hours, and I am clearly out of time. So, this is where I'm gonna stop, right? Next time I stream, the schedule is up. If I don't, if I don't stream before the next actual, like, thing on the schedule, it will either be more Phoenix Wright or more Persona 4 Golden, but as of right now, on the schedule, Persona 4, Go uh, Persona 4 Golden is the next game we're going to stream. Fuck. <laughs> and that's not going to be until next week. So, you know, that's it for the Twitch right now. As for the YouTube, I am starting to upload the previous streams for uh, Corpse Party Blood Drive, and I'm also going to start uploading the Vampire the Masquerade stuff too, you know, and when it comes to uh, the other playthroughs, keep an eye out for the Nightmare Before Christmas playthrough, Oogie's Revenge, and then, um, and then sometime, sometime this month, I should be starting the Pokemon Marathon, right? So, that's all gonna be happening on the YouTube channel right there on the screen, you know? And that's pretty much it for me. There's a link to my Twitter if you want to follow me there. If you're not followed on Twitch yet, please think about doing it. You know, it helps out. Um, what else is there that I want to say? Let's see. 
Uh, for those watching this on YouTube, first of all, you don't get to see this until the playthrough is over, so hop on over to Twitch, you get to see this earlier. And then, you know, if you like what you see, leave a like. You know, it helps out the YouTube channel. Helps out a lot with notoriety and stuff and get more eyes on the channel. And that's pretty much it for me. So, <laughs> kind of trying to rush through the outro here, but, you know, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. It's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. Take